to start with today's uh, session we have our first speaker of the day mrs radhika bhatia radhika bhatia started her adventure in france back in 2019 gaining a 3 years experience in india her initial experience began as a trade officer at french embassy in india and then moved as a hr journalist managing various administrative tasks and supporting her vibrant team to motivate most of you out here here is a fun bit from her when we asked her uh, about her bio she also applied jobs in france using her english cv this is definitely a motivation for all the people who are looking for english opportunities in france now she is currently working as a talent acquisition business partner for amazon in strasbourg over to you mrs radhika bhatia Mrs. Radhika, can can we have you? Mrs. Radhika Bhatia, we cannot hear you. Hemant, uh, I think you should uh, activate our voice uh, audio. Okay, just give me a minute. I just did. Can you please check, Radhika? Radhika, can you uh, can you uh, speak now? I think you're. I mean, you're being unmuted. Yeah, maybe there is some technical problem. What the technology is, we face more problems. Nevertheless, uh, we'll wait for some more time for uh, her to unmute herself. Okay. Uh, before uh, we go ahead uh, with uh, Mrs. Radhika Bhatia, due to some technicality issue, uh, we will be moving up uh, with our next speaker.
Mrs. Sudha, can you please continue with the uh, next speaker? Yes, he month. Yeah. Perfect. Thank God. Give me a moment, sir. So uh, moving forward to our session, uh, before we introduce uh, our next speaker of the day, uh, I would like to share my story. I came to France as a dependent in 2021 December, holding five years of experience in IT industry in India. I resumed my career here as a business analyst in PNP Paribas. In the same way, there are many dependents who came to France most of these dependents holds a professional degree and a hands-on prior experience. For all those dependents who are looking to resume their professional career or wanted to kickstart their career, let me introduce you, Mrs. Malika Varma, who came to France as a dependent in 2018. Currently, she is working as a business development executive for EDHEC Business School. Over to you, Mrs. Malika Varma. Mrs. Malika, you can um, uh, start talking. You are unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, uh, should I switch on my camera? I mean, uh, if you're comfortable, it's not an obligation that you can share your camera, uh, but if you feel to address the community, then definitely you can go ahead. Okay, so hello everyone, uh, good morning. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here amongst you today. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not very well prepared, but I will be happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have later as well. So to quickly give you a brief of uh, myself, I am Malika. I have been in France since um, uh, January uh, 2018. I moved here uh, after, um, for family reasons, uh, let's put it that way. So I moved here for family reasons and I um, decided to um, continue looking for uh, roles in the industry where I was already uh, back in India. Um, when I was in India, I was working in uh, the fashion and textile industry for many years. I had my uh, done my graduation as well as my master's in it. But when I moved to France, I, I decided to continue looking for opportunities in the same field. Um, However, it did not uh, really turn in my favor and uh, I was not able to find um, the appropriate app opportunities that I was uh, that was that were the most apt for my uh, uh, career. Um, so I spent almost a year looking for opportunities in the same field. Uh, then in 2019, I decided to uh, study. In France, I decided to uh, do a master's in towards management because I did not have a management and a business background. I had more of a creative uh, textiles background. So I uh, enrolled myself at Schema Business School, uh, like some of you already present here. And I did a master of science in project management and business, uh, business uh, development. So that was uh, how my journey started, actually, uh, my professional journey in France. It was in 2019. 
Um, unfortunately, as luck would have it, just seven, eight months later, uh, there was a pandemic and we were all confined. So I finished my master's studies um, at home. Uh, it, so it was not the best uh, time, but um, it was just hard luck. I was still lucky enough to uh, find an internship just after my studies. So once I started uh, working, uh, my first internship was into the education industry. And since then, uh, until now, I have been uh, in the education industry. I did an internship. And then in 2020 uh, to 2021 beginning, sorry, I uh, worked on a CDD for seven months in ESX School of Management in La Defense. So uh, since then, I have, been I have been working on roles on business development. I uh, recruit candidates, I guide them, I counsel them for uh, their master's studies. Uh, it is, uh, it could be for, for various masters, it could be uh, for um, international students as well as French students. So the, the market is quite diverse. Then towards the end of 2021, I joined uh, Eric Business School. I work in the campus of Paris of Eric Business School and my role is quite similar. I work for business development. Um, just uh, one thing that I forgot to mention that besides my master's studies, I worked a lot on my French language skills. And that is something uh, that is a small uh, suggestion that I would share, like to share with uh, the, the, the new uh, people moving to France. It could be for your own uh, benefit. It could be for um, working as a spouse or it could be for, for various other reasons. I think um, irrespective of uh, the professional background that you come from, irrespective of the number of years of experience and the, 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 the academic levels that you have, I think it's, it's a very, very good um, um, idea to learn the language, to keep improving. Uh, so that is one thing that really, really helped me. Uh, since I moved to France in 2018, I have been uh, taking lessons. I continue taking lessons even during my studies at Schema in uh, French language. And uh, today, the role that I work on is a completely bilingual uh, bilingual role. And I managed to get it uh, mostly not, not just because of my academic background, but, but also because of my language uh, competencies. So that is one tip that I would like to share uh, with everyone. Um, it's important to not just keep continuing your uh, technical and uh, soft skills, but also your language skills. So that's about it. I, I mean, uh, it's a it's a short uh, presentation that I I did, but I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, you would like to uh, uh, take up. Hemant or Sudha, would you have any questions that you would like to address? Thank you, Mrs. Malika, for your valuable insights. Um, uh, yes, I mean uh, definitely. I mean uh, all your uh, insights are really valuable uh, and really worth. I mean uh, having in uh, having you in today in our today's session. Uh, uh, unfortunately, she will not be available for the rest of the event of her uh, tight uh, schedule. But definitely, thank you very much uh, for uh, being present here, uh, unlike your tight schedule. Uh, maybe, I mean, if uh, any of the dependents or any of you wanted to uh, wanted to ask her any question, you can just uh, raise your hand. Uh, let it. Uh, let us make it faster since we have a uh, huge list of uh, panelists uh, speaking today. So. We have one question from Revati. What is the biggest challenge you faced while applying for jobs related to fashion in Paris? Interesting question for you to answer. I think you have some uh, uh, experience in fashion back in India as well. I mean, if I'm not wrong. So it would be yes. a really interesting question for you to answer this. Yeah. Indeed, uh, that's a very interesting point. Uh, it was uh, back in 2018 uh, when I was struggling to uh, find a job. So uh, my my technique was to adapt. My first step was to adapt my CV according to uh, the French job market. That was my first step. Um, secondly, where I was not very competent was my language skills because back then I did not uh, speak uh, any, any French. So I think that was one of the uh, negative uh, points in my CV. And the fa fa fashion and textile industry is extremely niche. Um, they uh, look for strong uh, um, academic and professional background, but also language skills. So without, without my language skills, I think it was very difficult for me to get through any job opportunities. So that's where I, I missed. Also, um, having an educational background in France uh, helps as well. Uh, so at that point, I did not have that neither. 
So that was uh, after spending many months, that, that is what I I came to the conclusion that these are the missing elements in my profile. And uh, that's why I was uh, not able to uh, get through. Um, so yes, the, my, my tips uh, to apply to these industry would be uh, definitely to adapt your CV uh, to the French job market, keep improving your uh, language skills. And um, yes, look for uh, look for companies who are larger in a way that they work for international markets. If they're too niche, if they only work for French markets and your language skills are not strong enough, then the chances of getting accepted are very low. I hope that answers Revati's question. Yes, that definitely answers this question. Um, uh, Malika, can you please take one more question if you have time? Yes, of course. Yeah, there is one question uh, from an anonymous, uh, anonymous person, Mr. Hank. Uh, what is the biggest uh, barrier or the big barrier to get job in France? Well, uh, again, I think I, I'm, my response would be a little repetitive. And uh, also, it depends from industry to industry. I, can't, I wouldn't want to generalize that way because different industries have different um, requirements uh, in terms of profiles. I, I'm not saying that you, if you don't speak French, you won't be able to get a job. I'm not saying that. You uh, have other uh, skills and you have probably a competitive edge uh, compared to other candidates. You might have stronger academic back background. You might have stronger uh, technical skills. So um, so the barrier uh, would is definitely depend on the industry. Uh, it is very industry specific in a lot of technical roles. Uh, language is not uh, an essential, but for uh, everything which are management roles, marketing, sales, like what I do right now, I'm into sales. Um, language is the biggest barrier, um, not just um, not just because um, they don't need English speakers, they do need English speakers, but at the same time, in order to interact internally within the team, with your boss and other uh, teams, uh, speaking the language becomes an, an essential, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know if it's a negative point or not, but uh, that's the reality. Uh, language becomes uh, the biggest barrier. Uh, the French job market is still not 100% open to non-French speakers. Perfect. Thank you so much for answering the, uh, this question, Malika. I mean, maybe can uh, you can just take one more question. Uh, can I yes. know, I mean, there's a question from Kiran asking, uh, hello, Malika, can I know your journey in learning French? Well, uh, that's uh, a very interesting uh, point that I did not cover. So I started learning French when I was all, still in India. I had not moved to France, but uh, um, I had met my future husband who guided me in a way that he was very harsh with the reality. And he told me that uh, you really need to focus on your language skills because uh, if not today, then two years later, you will have a difficulty in uh, not just getting into the professional world, but also making friends. So, uh, I mean, thanks to him, I joined Alliance Francais when I was still in India. I did A1 and A2 levels of French uh, when I was still in India. When I moved to France, I continued learning uh, French, not through Alliance Francais, but other language schools like, uh, um, I'm forgetting the name, but there are many, many language schools. Also, the Mairie de Paris uh, offers uh, good uh, language lessons, which are less expensive as well. You just need to enroll in time. And uh, the the crowd there is very mixed, very international. So you not just learn from the professor who's a local native speaker, but also from other students. So while my studies at Schema Business School, I continue taking classes, the CMA classes of Mihri Dabahi. And I progressed uh, in parallel to my studies. Also, when I uh, started interning after my studies in Schema, I was always uh, surrounded by uh, non-English speakers so that was a bit difficult in the beginning but then it turned out in my favor because I, I pushed myself to learn the language uh, even more learn the vocabulary so I think it's 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 a constant learning for many years it doesn't come very easily it's uh, uh, you need to really um, spend a lot of time and energy um, so yes there are there are many schools where you can join and getting a formal training at the beginning is uh, very useful. I mean, you can always learn through YouTube videos and on online. Uh, but 
studying in a real environment is very important. You need to, uh, once you have your grammar, base of grammar ready, uh, then the ball is in your court. You can keep developing your uh, skills uh, as you go along in your journey. So yeah, that's that's my journey <laughs> for learning the language. Thank you very much, uh, Malika, for being very patient and answering all these questions. Uh, definitely, I mean, uh, uh, your uh, inputs are really validated. And um, thank you for being to, uh, for today's part of the session. Thank you very much. And the later Thanks. questions uh, will be taken at the end of the session. Um, uh, because we need to have, we have a lot of uh, a big list of speakers uh, for today, uh, speaking on different domains. Uh, moving forward with our uh, remaining part of the session, our next speaker of the day, who has a mammoth 20 years, 28 years of experience with Tata Consultancy Services, who is none other than Mr. Nagesh Kumar, head of TCS France Service and Delivery and Strategy. He started his TCS journey as a tech lead. He started his uh, professional journey as a tech lead uh, in TCS France, and now he is heading the TCS France. Over to you, Mr. Nagesh Kumar. Uh, I've unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly, sir. Please go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh... I'm going to start one second. I wanted to come on the video. Can you see me as well? Yes, sir. Perfectly. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, I think I should thank you guys uh, for thinking of the, even this session, which is very relevant to the community and it's part of the community building. So kudos to all of you, Hemant and Srini. Uh, for taking this uh, initiative and driving it through. <clears throat> and um, thank you for this opportunity. So like uh, Heman said, being in, I'm a core TCS uh, to start with, you know, born in TCS and have uh, grown, performed various roles in TCS. So one constraint that I would have is uh, my view of uh, the world is very TCS. It was used to be pink or when previous CMO was there everywhere everywhere we used to see pink you know slides were pink and everything now new CEO again we have black to blue which is the original color of TCS the corporate color okay so before I start I think I would like to do it in three th three simple steps um, I come here and as part of an exp as an expat so I will probably not be taking the same journey that uh, most of you take um, so my journey is different um, but one thing that I can, what is the usefulness of uh, me speaking in this session is because I, I we hire talent on a regular basis. Um, you know, it's like uh, at least we, we hire around 40, 50 people a month. Um, and then we're, growing, we're in a growing business. So I, I see a lot of scenic folks who are coming and joining TCS. So I, I know the market well, how it behaves and what we are looking for as a corporate because we service our customers. So... Um, that way, I think uh, I will try to position uh, my pitch around uh, those aspects. Yeah. Um, as you know, like uh, the previous speaker spoke, and the French market is very unique and uh, it's large, second largest in probably Europe. Um, and IT services itself is around 35 billion. If you look at IDC, my IDC uh, surveys and so on, I don't know the. The people who are joining the call maybe may, may have different kind of backgrounds, but IT itself will have 35 billion market. You know, it's the seventh biggest economy in the world. It has got everything in itself. You know, what, what you you speak about, um, it's very unique. In, when I was thinking about it, it's very unique uh, in a way that it's very self sufficient. It's got its own tourism. It's got its own mountains. It has got its own, you know, beaches, wine, uh, aero defense. On one side, and and uh, aviation with Airbus being there, and luxury, and uh, many banks. And if you look at any sector, and it has built a lot of corporates which are world renowned. So that way, there are a lot of opportunities. But at the same time, like my previous speaker said, <clears throat> it's got its own unique cultural nuances, which is a uh, language comes at the beginning of it. So everybody 
expect uh, that uh, you know French and you know this, but at the same time there is a gray shade to it. I will come on to that. So first and foremost, before you entering into the market, you need to understand that it's got a lot of potential, and you choose in the right market for yourself and to make your life. Um, but at the same time, you need to understand that it has got you know unique uh, elements such as language, which I already she spoke about, right? Um, but at the same time, uh, any, any corporate has uh, different kind of language requirements. Suppose if it's an international global company like Sanofi's of the world, or even in, even in banking, uh, retail part is very French, but uh, corporate investment banking and other part are very, very, uh, you know, English. Uh, so yeah, Palma, I was talking about Sanofi or uh, even big companies like even Total in some part of engineering, uh, they speak English. So um, even though it is French broad brush, but there are pockets where uh, English uh, is an international, in, in, because they have to deal with international, um, internal international organization, English is used as the language of uh, communication within that space. So first thing is to, when you are looking out and looking for uh, looking out in the market, of course you need to know French and uh, maybe uh, at various levels, various degrees of competency. But at the same time, it is always uh, better to understand and uh, focus your search in organizations where there's more more, more international work environment where English is accepted, even though they, they have French requirements. But at the end, end of the day, uh, English can be a language of communication in, in your job. So that is number one. Um, so don't think everywhere French, but you know, focus on something. But do a market research now. You can do very easily with Chat GPTs of the world. You can get summary of everything, and you can really figure out what is the working language of various organizations within 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 France. So that is number one. So secondly, you need to really understand uh, what is your hook. Uh, let me explain what is a hook. We you usually use uh, you know this terminology when we are going and trying to win business to our customers, right? So we say, what is your hook? And so why should they give it to you? You know, we are going for and pitching for 10 million, 10 million account or 10 million, uh, 10 million, uh, you know, deal, 100 million deal, whatever. What is your hook? Why should they give you, right? It applies not only in France, everywhere, right? So, but uh, when you're applying the same thing to France, something that you need to understand is, what is the, lab, what is the talent pool that is available in French? French, uh, French uh, community, you know, general French, uh, French people. So usually the social studies, art and culture, and these kind of things are very pervasive, prevalent, and they they opt for it. If it is STEM education, especially in maths, complicated engineering, and all that, not as much as I would say in India. So there is absolute scarcity of uh, some STEM based. Uh, skills. So if you go and say I've done general administration, I could go and say I can do uh, you know marketing, and if you go and say I can do general uh, strategy and so on, it won't cut because they have a lot of them who are French speaking, who are native speakers, and probably have a better color advantage than us. Why would they give you? No, they wouldn't. So what is your hook? Means what, based because of you're based in India or wherever. Uh, because of your origins, what is that uh, technical stuff? I'm not saying technical means hardcore coding or Java. Or, no, even if it is a law or even if it is finance, what is your hook, which is not necessarily general management? You know, that's probably what you need to focus a lot. That's my single most uh, thing that puts you um, and apart from a lot of others. So, you know, we, we see candidates. Um, and uh, first thing that we see is uh, is that some is this something if I have to uh, really process work from it and expatriate something that I look for is uh, is it something that I don't find in French people? If I find in French people, I have to be very honest in admission that uh, I would go for them if it is on on par. If I don't find it in French French talent pool, I'm finding it difficult to fulfill my position. Then I go for expatriate. Uh, not because of any reason, because, you know, we are in service industry and we had to put people in front of a customer, their acceptance also becomes a key. So, and also we want to be part of a local community and we want to grow French, part of the French society. So we also need to have equal representation of, or more representation of French people. So 
so you need in, in a sense second point to close uh, what is your hook you ask yourself you know that's important <clears throat> um even if it is law even if it is finance even if it is healthcare everything which is technical in nature which cannot be done uh, which cannot be coming under broad brush of general administration that should be your uh, core um, focus and third i think it's probably applies to um, the people um, because we we are we groomed the way we are and so third point i would say is personal grooming is very very important when we see one of my colleagues who when the seniors we had to recruit i asked my colleague christoph to talk to them and first thing if the person is not well dressed not able to articulate uh, well you don't even get into the rest of the details he'll just say okay and i guess you know what i don't really feel this comfortable with this guy sometimes i really have to nurse your boss you know you can't be just looking at whether his, his shirt is ironed or not or is he wearing the right shoes um you also need to look at a uh, skill set but you know you don't always have people who are nudging these kind of guys you know french have their own ways of looking at things so i would say your ability to communicate your ability to you know your ability to convincingly articulate the things that you know and also the way well if you groomed is very important um that was my third point so uh, know the cultural nuances prepare well and um, second what is your hook you need to deeply introspect you need to do market research use all the technologies that are available in the market to do what you have to do and the last third and most important point equally important i won't say most important point equally important is to know that uh, french at least look for your personal grooming and they give a lot of importance to it especially when you're a new hire you know or uh, if you're going for internship or you're going for anything i uh, you need to be uh, well groomed uh, in terms of uh, the way you look unfortunately yes uh, means personal uh, i means grooming i'm not saying about anything means have you dressed well have you groomed your hair well you know these kind of things and uh, yeah uh, lastly uh, articulability articulate and uh, after that i just wanted to say one last thing um about tcs because in the in the hemen when he put it put up the whole thing he also said uh, the opportunities in tcs plants um see we're growing um, over last 5 years thanks to my boss who has is a real visionary and uh, we're growing at 10% and every year so there are a lot of opportunities and growing in terms of numbers building infrastructure delivery centers and so on we're very, very proud of what we have achieved um but uh, yeah, one thing for the for, for the purpose of this community and uh, uh, opportunities for it see if it is about english speaking talent again i go back to the point one english speaking talent we have 500000 people of them in within tcs itself so we rather give them opportunity for those guys um than having to look outwards within uh, experts from indian origin coming and trying to join us so unless they speak french and they differentiate themselves with the french language so that is what um the thesis france opportunities are suppose you are a hardcore uh, full stack developer we have jobs tomorrow for internship at least um you know like this uh, but if you are french speaker across the spectrum you have jobs there is no dearth of it and um, that is something that i wanted to leave as a parting and last uh, message if the opportunities in thesis are we're growing like i said uh, 40 people a month and uh, but we have these uh, kind of constraints of uh, hiring locally in france and um, yeah so lastly uh, one thing i wanted to say i'm not head of france uh, france no what i what i do is run a service delivery for france all customers across all uh, industries secondly we have an innovation center in france uh, and i run that as well and third part of a steering group of uh, five people who are uh, building strategy for tcs france growth and uh, go to market strategy so this is my job profile and i stop here um it seems in very bit monologue if you have any questions either now or later towards the end i can take it thank you hemant to you Th- thank you Th- thank you mr nagesh kumar for mm-hmm. highlighting the career opportunities in tcs uh, france and uh, for giving us a, a 
key inputs how we need to be uh, during the interview or uh, with the skill set. Uh, so your inputs are highly appreciated. A big thanks to you for being a part of this wonderful session and sharing your valuable input insights. Thanks, uh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you, sir. So moving forward, uh, I think Radhika Bhatia is uh, with us. Uh, so let's continue with her. Over to you, Radhika Bhatia. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly, can... Radhika. Thank All you right. so much. Perfect. For your patience as well. Now, I think no meeting is complete without the tech issues, so all good. <laughs> of course, I mean, with the growing technology, we have a lot of problems as well, yeah. <laughs> all right, so hi, everyone. Um, first, I just want to thank uh, Heyman's and team for organizing this event. I'm thrilled to be here today and discuss about the career opportunities uh, resume review. So I'm here in France for now about like, five years and um, I studied my master degree in HR project management. With that, I did my internship with PSA, which is an automobile company now called Stellantis. And um, as a part of a master completion uh, degree. Um, after that, I start looking for my first job and I landed up in with like few companies, BCG, Bain and Company, Amazon, and I opted to go for Amazon. Uh, today I'm going to speak about the CV perfection cover letter, uh, some networking tips. So I want to share my screen with you all. Just give me a second. Um, with a bit conscious of time, I will try to cover everything I can. Um, It seems I don't have this option to share my screen. Can you please check it again? I just gave you permission for to share the screen. Still now. Still not. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Now I came questions here. Oh, uh, I'll just give you a minute. Uh, I think I received your presentation. Maybe if you give me permission to share uh, yeah, my sure. screen, uh, it would be great. Go for it. No problem. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, perfect. All right, so can you go on to the next slide, Amit? Yes. All right, so perfect. So um, I will be going through uh, these topics today. So the about like the resume perfection, cover letter optimization, LinkedIn enhancement, networking strategies, and some interview strategies. So some do's and don'ts about the resume perfection. Uh, so no CV is perfect. Um, I would just say here that the aim for your resume is to focus more on a content rather than the design. So in terms like we hear every time, uh, what should be the length of the CV, the format, should we go like uh, two columns, one columns. So here in terms, I just want to give you some tips uh, to make your CV perfect. Uh, so. In terms of the length, I think based on your experience, uh, try to aim and uh, prepare your CV within one page, if not maximum two page, if you really have like too much to write down in terms of the experience. But as a university fresher, or if you just started looking for your first or second job, uh, just aim it for one page. In terms of the format, uh, make sure when you send your CVs, use the PDF format. Uh, still, I see every day many candidates just sharing their CV where the formatting is not proper. What actually formatting is, basically, it should be really easy to read. So make sure it is easy to read. Uh, normally, recruiters spend about like seven to eight seconds per CV just to swift. So not more than that because of the number of application um, we receive. So make sure... Um, 
it's easy to read. Um, so in terms of the layout, again, this comes with the format. So I personally prefer one column CV, which where everything goes um, step by step, not two columns where you have one column separated with your personal details, the other one with your experience and education. So that's really the choice, but uh, the easy to read is always the one which is in one column. Um, again, as said, content focus. So it should be more content focused rather than the design. Uh, I, there are some CVs candidate these days are making, putting lots of efforts uh, with designing, some creativity. Um, I agree this is like good catchy, but at the same time uh, in those CVs, we miss the content which is required to uh, find the candidate. So I suggest like to focus more on the content. Um, moving to the next part, so which is metrics. So make sure when describing your bullet points, add some data points, your achievements. So uh, which is important and these, these things are catchy ra rather than the design. So add um, your achievement, how many person you'd led, um, do you have like a team? Uh, how many people are in your team? Uh, if you have done in a project, how many project? Just try to make it more quantify. Um, moving on to the action language. So which means that try to use more action verbs rather than uh, the generic one. So which means starting your bullet point with led, collaborated, uh, spearheaded. So some, uh, some words just to give you an example. Um, Add your personal touch, so hobbies, like what you like to do outside of your work. Um, I think in France and most of the European countries, if you interview, some people do ask you and they like to hear what something interests you apart from, you know, your regular tasks. So what? So this gives actually a sense of like thinking out of the box, what you like to do, what you can do. And the last one is LinkedIn customization. So which means that uh, in the CV, there are still people who don't put their customized CV link. So I will talk about the customization of your LinkedIn link um, in the coming slides, but uh, make sure the link is there. A uh, person can just click it and just go directly to your LinkedIn profile rather than copying and pasting. Um, the next part is about the don'ts of the CV. So I think I have already covered some part of it. Um, again, like in terms of the length, uh, again, just avoid multiple pages or extensive experience. Um, keep your bullet point shots, maybe two, maybe three to four points per experience, not more than that. Um, again, designing, avoid formatting and try to keep it clean. Um, avoid excessive creativity, objective. Um, some CVs do have objective, but if necessary, just add in if really, if you're doing a career transition, for example, and looking for a job which is not matching with your experience, this gives you a little bit of space. So if you're like counting with the same experience, I think the objective is not that necessary. Um, or maybe objective is important when you're looking for the internship, just to precise that you're looking for an internship. So it, it gives like a sense um, in a first go that it tells you recruiter that you're looking for a internship or apprenticeship. Uh, personal details, um, I know like in India still now, I see CVs people have, and I think this is like maybe, you know, uh, from different cultural backgrounds uh, that we do add like the age, full address, um, family details, nationality. So I think these details are not really important. So uh, you're in a country where diversity is embraced. So just think about diversity, equity, and uh, don't add these details. So this is not required and the photo. So many people, you know, keep reaching out to me and ask me every time, do we need a photo on a CV? Um, should we add a photo? To be honest, it doesn't matter. It, until if you have like something in the job description that man, mentioned to add your photo um, along with your CV or motivation letter, in those cases you can add, but photo normally you don't need it, but in some countries, if I say Germany, if you're applying for a companies based in Germany, maybe they like to see the 
photo. Uh, but to be honest, this is something not required and it's just taking your space from the CV. Um, so if they have to check your profile, your LinkedIn is updated where you have all the details they can check and no one is actually hiring you based on your photo. So just don't add your photos on your CV. All right, so moving to the next one, uh, it's about the cover letter. So I'll give always like, this is my personal advice, like to write the cover letter. I know everyone's approach is little different. Um, I like to personalize, keep it at concise and personalized in a way, structuring I, you, and we. So which means I, who you are, you as a company tell a bit about the company and then the we, which means what you can build together. So your skill set with companies and the role experience, what you can do together. So this will give you a bit of a structure, not writing too many things about your CV, but try to, you know, uh, customize based on the job you're applying for and the job description. So this is the format that I have always used and still using if, if I'm going to apply for a more roles or more jobs. Um, then the third part, highlighting individual skills, company fit and collaborative potential. So again, like this comes to the who part, like which means you um, just try to highlight the skills, company fit um, in the we part, like how you can, how you're a right fit for the company, the collaborative potential, what you can bring together. And the last point is about the photo inclusions, which means motivation letter. Again, don't require your photo. Um, I still receive lots of CVs and you know cover letters with photo. So really this is something not required. Um, just focus more on a content, um, your skill set rather than the designing again. All right, so going on to the next part with LinkedIn enhancement. Uh, LinkedIn is again a very wide topic. Um, it's difficult to cover within one slide, uh, but I'll just I have just marked some points, which means like make sure your headline is catchy. Uh, if someone doing a sourcing, uh, we can just like quickly check what you're looking for uh, or who you are. Uh, it shouldn't be like more than let's say three to four words. So keep it short, precise, and catchy. Uh, customize URL. So LinkedIn has an option to customize your LinkedIn, which means when you click on the link um, anywhere on Google, you have like a uh, very long link, which is not required. So on LinkedIn, there's an option to customize your URL. For example, myself, I have did it like Radhika Bhatia slash HR professional, and that's my customized URL link. Um, photo. Uh, Try to use your professional photo. Um, here, it's the right chance to use your photo. So just add in something professional photo. Uh, not something, you know, playing in a park or just like, you know, some very awkward background. Uh, that's still like something there, but this is your professional networking space. So here, your um, first look is your last look. So whoever is jumping on your profile, they might, you know, check you based on your photo, what you have. Um, then about the about section, spice it up a little bit. Uh, again, don't write lengthy uh, paragraphs here. It should be again uh, within like, let's say not more than two to three paragraphs, uh, which means like each paragraph should have like about two to three lines, not more. Just don't, don't like write long paragraphs explaining everything about your work experience do, we don't need that. It's already something that you have explained in your education, in your project skills, um, in other section of the LinkedIn. Um, about going ahead about the projects. So projects means um, on LinkedIn, you have particular option to add your projects. So it could be like your personal projects. It could be your uh, professional projects. So try to use like those option to make it more clear. Um, then ask for a recommendation. Um, some recommendation endorsement is good um, for interviewers like to see uh, who you have worked with, your collaboration with your peers. So ask for uh, recommendation. Um, 
again now next on to the locations so broaden your location so if you're looking for a job make sure it is clear on your profile um add like more search if you're using the open to job um uh, thing so maybe you know there is an option for open to jobs so you can make it only visible if you don't want to make it visible to your maybe peers your company and you're still looking for a change so there is an option that only visible to a recruiters so just mark it that so it is not visible to anyone like from your colleagues or your peers but only recruiters can see that and they can contact you and based on that you can broaden your location um outside of europe if you're looking for or xyz what you are open for and the last point is about the volunteering experience so they do appreciate if you are doing some things outside of the workspace and uh try to add if you have like any sort of experience um you are like collaborating with any uh local ngos anything so anything you have just try to add it in your volunteering experience it give more sense of like outside of your work again um and just one more point here is about the language uh so linkedin has uh options to add your linkedin profile in different languages so try to use that option um if you're using your profile in english make sure you're using the same language i know some people like mixing up the language with education and then with um education is in french but the other part is in english so just try to make two de different uh, options so within linkedin there is a option where you can add as many language profiles you want so uh, recruiters can click it english french hindi xyz and they can see your profile in that particular language so you don't need to like mix up your languages um all right so if we can move to the next slide about the networking strategies so this is something we all need uh in today's world so just some tips about linkedin um try to attend the industry events and conferences so what i mean by industry here is what you're targeting for um if you're targeting for tech try to like look around some tech conferences events maybe you can go and participate uh learn more about the industry what's going new and those things you can maybe use it in your interview um while preparing for it or while during your interview the second is connect with the alumni and the social media so alumni again like this is important um it could be like the university alumni it could be like your previous company alumni it can be anything so social media again it comes back to the linkedin uh, which is today's one of the networking uh, portal uh, i think everyone is using for um next one is networking events so again here what is this so this is more about like for the university going uh uh students so when i was studying in france my university used to organize uh many after works uh events or you know maybe some networking events some company they used to call like some companies where we have opportunity as a student to connect and this really helps um i have my personal experience um while when i was studying i met someone um uh, in a event and then with my skill set and i talks he recommended me to a company and uh, gave me personalized uh, recommendation uh, to the head of that department and i landed up my internship with that so with just networking and keeping in touch with people it it really helps you um the next one is offer to help others which means networking is not only one way so networking uh is a two way street so offer help to others in your network when you can this also helps to build your relationship uh and yeah and on the next last part so follow up with the new connections so after the networking events whenever you're meeting anyone um or just try to follow up either via email uh maybe via linkedin so just follow up so that you know they can remind you and they remember you like you have met and it gives like a positive you know out of 100 if one of you is doing that i'm sure like they will always remember you and you know if you need something they can they can help you with that all right um 
and the last part um, can you move it Hemant and the last part is the interview strategies. So here um, I have some set of points like how to prepare for an interview before the interview and what you can do after the interview. So I think when you're preparing for an interview, make sure like you search about the company values, culture and interview insights. Um, why I am focusing on value culture here because in France and in Europe, they really care about the work culture. They really care about the values of the company, how you're a cultural fit for them. And these days, like even companies have an interview, maybe the last panel, which is called like a, a cultural fit, where they try to see yourself, like how you are, uh, how good fit you are for a company in terms of culture. Uh, are you aligning with their uh, company vision? company's value, et cetera. So just have a look on that and try, you know, using that during your interview um, to see how you align with their company's culture and talk a little bit about that during the interview. While preparing, use the STAR method. So I don't know if many of you know about this, but STAR method is like situation, task, action, result. So when you give answer to a way, I think it covers most of the things. So you have a situation, you have like a task, what you have done, action and result, and focus on you rather than a we. So what you have done, what was the situation for you, what was the action you have taken, and what you have achieved, rather than focusing on we or as a project. So when really giving um, answer about the behavioral question, follow this format, and I think this helps uh, really well. Um, and the next one is leveraging LinkedIn to understand interview interest. So again, like this is about interviews interest. So if you have received an interview invite, uh, I suggest, you know, go on LinkedIn, look around their profiles, just check about like other colleagues. I think it always give you a sense of like, what's their interest? I, and you can use it during the interview uh, that, you know, I have like this experience and, you know, definitely they start talking about this, that they also have like personal experience like this. So I think use that LinkedIn profile um, for the interviewers and to know about the interviewers and in interest. Um, the next one, networking and reach out to connections for insights. So if you have any common connection uh, within that company, I think LinkedIn has that option, which always tell you if you're applying for that you have a common connection working or maybe a previous alumni or a university alumni. So you always use that approach to reach out to those people and ask for like support, um, know about the company's culture. And if start you know just by asking a company culture or if they can tell you more and then ask if they can do a referral or um, provide like any uh, contacts to you you can reach out so i think uh, these tips i hope this help you um, and just the last point so ask questions during the interview uh, many times many candidates don't ask questions during the interview make sure when you're doing an interview you're speaking most of the time rather than the interviewer speaking most of the time so make it like 80 20 so interview should be like 20 just asking question but it should be your opportunity to tell the more you can about your profile why they should choose you um, and do prepare some questions to ask to the interviewer, not same question to all the interviewers, but like different questions every time. And the last one is the post interview etiquette. Um, so after the interview, um, this is really appreciated. Just write an email saying thank you uh, for the interview. It was nice. You get to know some insight about the company and role. Uh, thank them for telling like those things. And again, like, your, show your interest that you're with this conversation you're interested um, about this job it really give a positive impact in the sense um, first many you know their recruiters are interviewing many people and if one out of that like send these thank you notes or thank you email even you know despite thinking 
something didn't go well in the interview with this thank you note, they might think of reconsidering you for the next level. So yes, um, in I think here I finish. I'm not sure if I'm a little over time, but uh, thanks for that. Um, I'm happy any questions if you have. Uh, Radhika, I mean, uh, uh, we will take the questions later, but uh, really no thank you for your presentation. Uh, it was really um, um, outstanding. Uh, definitely, when you talk about the perfect CV or the cover letter or an enhanced LinkedIn profile, definitely I'll portray my uh, uh, example to you. I mean, uh, previously when I uh, met Radhika uh, on LinkedIn, I just dropped a uh, formal message whether she could help us uh, with the, she, she could help me with the uh, LinkedIn enhancement or the um, CV construction. Definitely. I mean, yes, you can write her to all the time. Yes. She will reply to you. When she's free, definitely she will help you in enhancing your profile, definitely. That, is, uh, that should be there. And thank Thanks, you so much, Sarah. Radhika, for that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's move forward uh, uh, with the uh, session. Uh, so, Sudha, can you please take uh, forward uh, the session uh, with the next speaker? Yes, Hemant. Thank you, Hemant. Thank you, Radhika, for your wonderful inputs. Uh, so moving forward, introducing our next speaker of the day, who is none other than Mr. Aditya Paturi. Aditya came to France in 2019 for his double masters. He is an alumni of Adhek Business School. He started his professional journey of being an apprentice in research pool. He is currently working as a data engineer at research pool. Uh, here is a small AV on the topic that he will be speaking on. Can you please play the video? Yeah. Hey, man, I, I think there is a problem with the sound. Over to you, Mr. Aditya. Hello, everyone. I hope all of you are having an amazing Sunday. Let's make it more special by understanding the role of AI in job searching. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I think there was a problem with the sound earlier in the video. I will try to share it again with you all. Can you all please see it? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Did you know that in today's competitive job market, over 250 resumes are received on average for each corporate job opening? It's tough out there for job seekers. But fear not, because AI is here to revolutionize the job search process. In this presentation, we'll explore how artificial intelligence is changing the game by enhancing resume screening, optimizing job matching, and providing valuable insights for job seekers. Stay tuned to discover how AI is reshaping the future of job hunting. Yeah, uh, so thank you. So today we are in third industrial revolution, or we also say it as an information age, digital age. So today to find job opportunities is not very difficult if we use the modern technology. Today, artificial intelligence is not only in the projects of information technology, but also in the traditional backgrounds such as finance, marketing, human resource. We are using a lot of machine learning algorithms and artificial intelligence technology to, to have a better opportunities. A student, if he's applying for a job, he can use this modern technology in preparing his her CV to increase the visibility of the CV, to build portfolios, to do some projects, etc. So today I want to uh, share a small example with you. Uh, let's imagine that I am a student in marketing doing my master's here in France in a business school. I'm in my second year of master's and I want to apply for an internship. 
So as a traditional marketing student, I want to apply in a luxury companies like Laurel, Zara, et cetera, and I want to find an opportunity in marketing. But unfortunately, I don't have any experience. I don't have experience in my home country, that is India, or I don't have experience in, in France. So what I can do is I can try to build a portfolio. And how can I try to build a portfolio? I'm a marketing student. I don't know where I can start. Don't worry. Today we have the technology. So I'm going to share a small example of how I can do it. I hope you all can see my screen. Yes. Thank you. So here. But it's I only the video that's uh, being uh, displayed on your screen, Aditya. OK. So I'm going to reshare my screen again. Yeah. Is this OK? Can you please confirm? No, not exactly. Yes. yes. No, it works. No, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's imagine I am the final year marketing student. I want to apply for an internship and I found a good position that is matching my interest in the company Zara. Zara, as you all know, is into fashion and luxury uh, sector. So I want to build my portfolio and I want to promote my CV uh, to apply for this position. So I just browse the news article and I see that just three months ago, Zara, they launched a new hairline product. And here there is a small description. What is the product? What is the price? What are the details? And how it is going to change the uh, Zara's view in the market. So I want to prepare a small video and I want to put it in my portfolio. So later when I have an interview, I can share it with the recruiter and I can share with them my ideas. It's very simple. The first step I am going to is I'm going to create a prompt. So prompt is an structured, organized text mm -hmm. in which you are going to give the machine so that it can create an automatic video for you. So for example, here, I just write written a prompt saying create a video for the Zara product promotion. And I just got the text from the article. But then I also added in the end that I want to have a deep and exerted voice in the background with a pleasant music. So I'm just going to copy this and see what I can do here. So I'm using a tool called Veet. Veet is a new tool. It uses GPT in the background and then it converts text to a video, which is an amazing, amazing tool. I'm just going to pay on here and I'm going to just click on send that video. So what is happening in the background with whatever prompt or the command I have given to this specific tool, it is trying to create a video. So if I want to do anything in more specific, for example, I am trying to promote a BMW car, which is black in color and has nice music system. So in the prompt, I'm going to be more specific by saying there is a BMW car which is black in color and try to focus on the music system which has more advanced capabilities. So when I have the video, I can see that point very specifically and in detail in the video. So let's try to see what our video is. I hope you can see my screen and also you can hear the video. So here, in this tool, in this particular tool, there is an op option. Either I can put it as a YouTube video, TikTok, Instagram reel, or post. So let's say I'm going to just show it in original version. And here I have many options. So I'm going to explain them in, in, uh, in brief, but I'm just going to see what video this is exactly about. Introducing Zara Hair, the latest sensation in hairstyling. Developed in collaboration with hairstylist Guido Palau, this luxurious line features a gold gel, glitter spray, bobby pin, and comb, all for just $49.90. Perfect for adding a festive touch to your hair this holiday season. Stay tuned for more exciting releases from Zara in the world of hair care. Get ready to elevate your hair game with Zara Hair. So I, I hope 
all of you saw the video and also you hear the background uh, voice and also the music. So what is happening right now is, I don't know anything about the product. What I just know is the Zara is a brand and I want to find an opportunity in this brand. So I developed a small video. I'm going to do a videos like this, maybe for the other products of Zara, which I have knowledge or, or the products what I'm using or the products I'm familiar with in the Zara collection. I'm going to create a portfolio and in the portfolio, I'm going to add all these videos. And when I have an uh, opportunity for the interview, I can show this and I can demonstrate my, not only my skills, but also my passion and interest to work with this brand. Here, we can also add a personal touch. For example, I am a, uh, let's say I'm a student from India. I did my mechanical engineering. Here in France, I'm pursuing my master's in supply chain. So I want to create a video that explains my personal uh, CV. So instead of a boring text, you can create a video by just giving commands like how we saw a prompt. And then you can replace the video with the replace media and you can add the video of your own life. And the best example, you can use your Instagram Reels or the TikTok or your Facebook Reels so that you can create your own content in a way which is more interesting and in an organized uh, manner. Uh, so like I was speaking about portfolios, this is uh, like earlier, I think the, the Radhika also mentioned about how we need to have our own uh, portfolio and all. So this is one example I found online. So this is Anubo, he has some projects so if i go down i can see his um, summary and when i click here i can see his resume this is a very nice way of organizing our digital portfolios and if i just share this link with the uh, recruiter or with the hr they can browse about my projects my resume my contact details and they can even click and see the projects that I worked and developed my skills. This is one of the best way to promote our CVs in today's competitive world. Uh, so I tried to compile a list of tools that we can use uh, uh, for the students during this job search process. I'm going to share this with uh, Hemant and he will send you an email um, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Aditya, for your um, uh, inputs uh, of how to integrate uh, artificial intelligence in our daily life. Definitely, yes. Uh, with, the, with the growing technology, we also have to update ourselves and adapt to the current technological trend. Current technological trend. Yeah, it will definitely help you when used properly. Uh, thank you, Aditya, again uh, for throwing more light on this topic, uh, on this unexplored topic uh, for those who are uh, in job search and looking for career uh, switch. Uh, before we move forward with our session, uh, we have a uh, uh, we have three sponsors of the day, uh, which is uh, uh, Student Funds, Studafix, and uh, Hotel Taj Mahal. Uh, when it comes to the first uh, sponsor of the day, uh, stu uh, Student Funds. Uh, it is also started by our very own Telugu community member, Mr. Sandeep Golla. Uh, the basic core idea of uh, this business uh, is to just provide uh, short uh, funds uh, for all the students or the job seekers here in France. I mean, back then, when I'm uh, doing my master's, uh, uh, I used to have this uh, shortage of 1,000 euros or 1,500 euros a month. Uh, uh, because, I mean, uh, it is not always uh, we can ask our parents or friends uh, uh, for our daily expenses. So definitely student uh, student funds will be a definitely a better option uh, to reach out. You can directly reach out uh, them online as well as their uh, uh, Instagram page. Uh, you can directly DM them and their team will be connecting with you with all the required documents and you can get a faster loan quickly. Going forward with the session. It is not always uh, the existing skill set, a professional 
a degree, a lot of courage and a bit of patience uh, to crack an opportunity. We need to update ourselves, boost your skill set and match the current job trend. Here is our next speaker to throw more light on this to uh, topic. Let me introduce you, Mr. Uh, Dinakar uh, Ayala Somayajula, business consultant of Wipro. Dinakar worked as an automobile engineering for uh, automobile engineer for six years and later pursued second master's in business administration from HEC Paris. Over to you, Dinakar. Thank you, Hemant. You can hear me, right? I'm audible. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction as well. And uh, hello, everybody. Good morning. So uh, as Hemant introduced, I will start very briefly on my journey so far. And then uh, and then I will speak. I shall speak about uh, what I've been asked to speak. I've prepared a few points. So mm -hmm. I have been in Paris since 2012. This is my 12th year in France. Uh, and before coming to France, it was a hobby for me to just learn French at Alliance Française in Hyderabad uh, during my engineering. I just felt that I have uh, two days out of seven every week where when I'm not doing much and I used to go for weekend classes and uh, three hours on Saturday afternoon, three hours on Sunday afternoon over three years helped me start from let's say A2 or B1. I had a little bit of French in class nine and 10, which I really enjoyed. So from B1, I reached C2 by the end of my engineering. I did not have this ambition that, yes, I want to come to France, but by the end of uh, my engineering, what started out as a hobby became a skill that I realized that I could put together with a passion for automobile engineering and I could try to come to France. So I've been in, uh, I, I spent one year in Czech Republic at Prague in 2011 and I've been in Paris since uh, 2012. I did my master's in uh, powertrain engineering. So powertrain is, think of a car, think of the engine. Before it goes into the production line. You have all seen videos of manufacturing. Before manufacturing all the work that goes on the engine, that was my domain and my specialization. So less of research, more of the development work in, in the R&D. So I, and uh, the, the biggest challenge for me at that stage was that I went through master a technical masters in French medium. Out of a class of 39, there were 31 French students and I was the only Indian and it was a struggle to listen to what the, 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 the faculty is explaining in French, what did I study in English uh, and then make the connection and uh, a very good experience. So after my master's, I spent six years from 2014 to 2019 in the automobile industry. I worked for uh, Peugeot, uh, PESA, as a contract engineer for three years. And then I got absorbed at Renault as a direct hire in 2016. After three years in Renault, my, my realization was that, uh, firstly, I had become too specialized in a, in a single domain uh, of engine electronics. So the car, the engine, and the engine's brain, the engine electronics, and that was my world. I could also see that staying in a technical engineering position in a very traditional French organization like Renault, I could see that I would not have a progression in my career uh, in the sense that climbing the ladder would be very difficult. Uh, uh, the change in terms of what I would work on would also be very limited to within this domain of engine electronics and, um, and of course, compensation salary, the, the, the salary increments are, are, uh, are parallel to inflation. So very, very minimal. Then I, and that was when I realized that the world outside is also very big and that I should, I should make a change, uh, now. And that was when I realized that uh, a, a, an MBA from a very good school is important. I will make the investment. So 2020, I quit my job. 2020, January, I even took a loan of 50,000 euros, uh, quit my job and uh, went to HEC Paris to start my MBA. Uh, three months later, COVID happened. Uh, I went through the MBA program and then I got picked up by Wipro. Uh, Wipro has a leadership development program where they recruit about 25 MBA graduate students from various business schools worldwide and they place them in their local offices. 
uh, you, I went through a rotation program where I went through various roles. I worked for the chief of staff as the chief of staff to the managing director of Southern Europe for four countries. I worked with an account executive. I even went through the sales cycle uh, the, as a pre-sales bid manager within Wipro before finally uh, choosing to uh, join Wipro Consulting as um, in the energy sector. And for the past year and a half, I have been working with an oil and gas company helping them to sell biofuels in their aviation business. So this is this has been my journey, and uh, and uh, it has been a, a, a continuous process of self evaluation, self improvement, and uh, and and continuous improvement for knowledge and and of yours of myself. Uh, and and this never never ends. It's always continuing, and I'm always questioning myself. There's a lot of anxiety and insecurity as well. But at the same time, it has to transform into positive energy. Now, um, what? Now coming to job search, I wanted to start out with uh, with the situation, and then and then come into some advice, some points of advice, and. As I was listening to the previous speakers, I realized that we've had uh, Nagesh Garu, who comes at, uh, who comes, who, who brings perspectives from a very senior management level uh, lens. Then we had uh, Miss uh, Radhika, who, sp who spoke ab uh, about the same job search networking from a recruiter perspective. And I was realizing that I could probably bring perspectives from the the lens of the candidate himself. Uh, and the struggles that you would possibly uh, face, and and also uh, and also share some empathy in 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 my words. So, to start with, we realize that right now the market is slow. Uh, during COVID, there was a huge uh, spike in recruitment as there was a lot of demand for technology, and companies were hiring and. Now that 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 spike has uh, has led to increased costs and the demand also uh, the the demand for technology and services has also cooled off. So the entire tech and services sector is facing uh, certain difficulties. As a result of which, when it comes to the candidate, the supply of positions is slightly lower. So the market is slow, and this is an external uh, factor. Then coupling that with the candidate uh, himself or herself, when we, uh, like most of us in this in this audience here, if we are coming in as a non-native applicant, so a non-French national applicant, possibly without having proficiency in French, it it all comes it makes it a very uphill task, and it's a it's a challenging task which which requires a lot of resilience. Now. So when you look at this task, now I want to go a step further and I want to divide the, the, the challenges and issues into two categories. The first one is the factors that are beyond your control. And the second would be obviously what is what you can do, what is in your control. So when you look at factors beyond your control, obviously the supply of positions is low, uh, which would translate to fewer open positions. Getting interview calls is very difficult. Companies also have a pressure to control their costs, possibly to shift positions offshore, which which all which which makes it difficult for us to find positions in France, a CDI in France, which is the ultimate goal. So these are beyond your control. But so but but what is in your control is something that you should continuously be focusing on and trying to polish. Uh, even the factors that are in your control, you could divide them into two, two aspects. One is the easy low hanging fruits, like Nagesh Garu had mentioned, groom yourself, present yourself well, be appealing to the recruiters. And the uh, so these are something like the lower hanging fruits. And on the other side, we have the tougher to achieve the more long-term goals that you should achieve, which would be like achieving French proficiency. For example, so um, so what I want to emphasize is that in every step of your job search and your hunt, you have to put your best foot forward. Uh, starting with the CV itself, like Radhika uh, had mentioned very very nicely, it has to be concise. 
it the cv is the first impression that you give of yourself and that give and that gets barely 5 7 seconds like like she mentioned of attention from the recruiter so it is important to stand out and that the cv must be crisp it must not be verbose there must especially not be any the spelling mistakes grammar mistakes and you have to put your best foot forward when you mention your role try to think of it less as a job description and what you actually achieved in those roles what were your accomplishments uh, so that um, so that you should look at the the whole process of recruitment not as okay give me a job i will do something and i will get a salary but more like it is you are creating a relationship where an organization is willing to bring you in so there is something that you will give and the organization will give you and you should be looking at what boxes tick this relationship the most in how you can fit so there is the cv the cv is the first barrier and after that is getting the calls for the interviews when you go into the interviews also you have to be well groomed like nagesh garu said not only in terms of appearance but also in terms of how you present yourself and just like the cv even in the interviews the decision is almost certainly made within the first 2 minutes it, with your first answer itself the decision is 80% made whether you are going to be considered for the next round or for the job itself or it's done so so uh, for example for my interview my final interview with wipro which was with a with a senior vice president i went through uh, i i just prepared for two days just for that opening you could say the opening over the first question will be it's obvious the first question will be tell me about yourself how do you present yourself within let's say 90 seconds without boring the person in front of you we should you sh it should not become too verbose at the same time you have to stand out you have to make it appealing so interviews take a lot of preparation for example if you start off with saying myself dinakar then i would probably not be very impressed by the statement uh, so so how you start how you uh, how you compose your response just on your introduction matters a lot when you go into the interview uh, so so what i want to say is keep preparing keep preparing and by preparation it just it doesn't mean that you have to uh, sit by yourself it's not a preparation for an examination it's it is self improvement look at it in the form of how can i be the better my a better self of me who is that better self of me and what should i do to get there define small steps and and you will see there are also valuable lessons to be taken from previous interviews which you have gone through which might not have succeeded what did not work out there and this need not necessarily be through feedback from the interviewer norm if if interviews don't work out you must write to them asking for feedback and you might probably not receive a response as well so uh, so so just introspect continuous introspection is important and and uh, i wanted to share something from the candidate's perspective is on networking uh, there is a very interesting video that i had seen from insiad business school which was shared to us during my mba which is called the informational interview how do you speak to someone whom you don't know who is in a domain who is much better established and you would like to learn from them and make and transform the conversation from seeking information to making him as your guide as your mentor there is a nice video i shall share the link in the chat after 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 i speak uh, after i'm done um, and and uh, what i also wanted to tell you in my last few points is this is not a pleasant experience to be continuously in the lookout for jobs it is difficult yet at the same time do you have really have any other option so in which case consider this phase as 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 a as a building of your strength of your character and do not let go do not let go do not compromise very quickly either keep 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 fighting at it be relentless and be resilient be be resilient like nagesh garu was saying what is your hook 
similar to your hook it is about differentiating yourself how best can you stand out for that position uh, for the interview uh, during the interview so if you think about it that way even your cv can be tailored to each position like aditya was explaining earlier for that position what are the keywords what keywords should appear on your cv which will make you stand out similarly what research have you done about the company before going into the interview and and it is always about making the other person in front of you to to just pause for a minute pause for a second and think aha i did not think of this he's he's making me think of this that is how you stand out um uh so this process is also about continuously discovering yourself be curious keep seeking information and always if france is your goal keep learning french you don't need professional classes this is just my last point i will conclude in in a minute you do not need professional classes if you have the will you can start out with duolingo as an application for grammar and the best thing is when you are in france french is all around you uh i i look back at my experience in prague when i was there i did not speak any any czech when i went to prague and when i went to the supermarket it was a delight because everything is labeled in the local language so you get you and and i just, at that time i didn't even have a smartphone i bought a small pocket dictionary and i would just keep translating and the more you attempt to speak french the better you are received so so overcome that inhibition that maybe my french is not that great and i should probably stay in the comfort zone of english try to speak the language and you will be surprised by the welcome that you receive from the person in front of you um, if you make the attempt so um th this is all that i wanted to cover uh, i have been through in my journey like I, i was telling you a very big change to move away from core automobile engineering into a sector where which has not which was not my comfort zone to come into consulting and even now every day i learn from my 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 work there are so many times when i keep thinking oh should i have worded that email a little better should i have spoken a little differently during this this meeting where where the, where there were there were quite a few senior stakeholders and so on so make continuous improvement and continuous discomfort your comfort zone <laughs> it is ironical but but that that would be my key message to you uh, hemant i think we are also running out of time please do not hesitate to reach out to me on linkedin i i i would be very happy to speak with you to help you support you i can't offer jobs obviously i i am i am also not very well established in in my organization i would say i am only a, a, con a consultant or a resource but but i can help you with your struggles so uh, keep at it stay strong thank you thank you himant thank you thank you very much dinakar uh, for putting all your uh, candid experience uh, in front of our audience today uh, which is very much needed for uh, audience uh, here with us today and uh, for all your valuable insights and uh, focusing on the need to boost a concrete skill set in order to Uh, placed in a better position thank you very much thank you very much denikar so for the next uh, moving forward it is not always uh, just securing a job in france there are many opportunities uh, to become a professional in our career in a core domain uh, to to fetch more information on this topic we have our next speaker of the day dr hemanta nati she completed her phd in bioinformatics and computational biology she is currently working as a clinical project manager at institute gustav rossi uh, she will be talking uh, on her uh, aftermath opportunities post masters over to you dr hemalata nati uh thank you sudha uh, for introducing me and thank you hemant and uh, ftc committee members and ftc committee for this wonderful opportunity uh in our, to start with i'll be sharing my experience uh my journey in france and later on i'll be moving to the topic that i have assigned to talk on uh i'm he i'm dr hemalata uh i'm uh, i finished my phd in uh, india in the uh, in bioinformatics and computational biology uh from university of hyderabad and later on i have worked as a research associate at ccmb in hyderabad on metabolic pathways i'm basically from the research background so 
Uh, I moved to France as a research associate uh, in aix marseille University. Uh, here in France, I worked as a, a postdoctoral fellow and research associate in various domains, uh, starting from metabolic pathways, uh, 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 the molecular evolution, biology, bioinformatics. And uh, later on, uh, after five years of my postdoctoral uh, experience, I have tried for uh, CDE position as an assistant professor here in France. But uh, due to the screening of only uh, French candidates, it was very difficult. Then uh, as a woman, you know, like uh, we need to have a break. So I had a break for my baby. So I took a maternity leave. So there was a gap in my career. So in order to fulfill that gap, I have uh, transitioned my career to the cl clinical research in pharma. So now I'm working as a, a clinical uh, project manager at Gustav Rosi. Uh, so I'll be sharing the topics that I would uh, be as assigned to do. Uh, I'm sharing the screen. Can you see the screen? You can share it now. Can you share, yes, uh, can you see the screen? Yes, yes, perfectly. Okay, perfect, okay. So, second. So these are the topics that I'll be discussing with uh, with you today. So what are the opportunities of the masters? A, or PG in France and key steps for enrolling in a PhD in France and different disciplines available for PhD and a list of uh, possible funding sources for PhD in France and list of scholarships for doctoral program in France and opportunities after PhD in France and, and how to apply for a postdoctoral position and uh, what are the different uh, fellowships that are available for the postdoctoral fellows and uh, how to transition from one field to another and what are the pros and cons that are there for uh, the transition if you move from one field to another field. So after uh, masters, after doing masters, you have plenty of opportunities in France. Uh, for example, one can go for higher studies like uh, enrolling in a PhD and applying for the grants in, in the form of funding. And uh, uh, after uh, 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 not only studies, you can also look for employment, like immediately after master's, one can go for job opportunities. The key point uh, for getting a job in uh, ma after master's is like you should have a good score, means you should have a good percentage in, in your master's and uh, you should be French language proficient as many speakers have already talked about it. So I will not stress upon this. So uh, the French language is a main major, major bottleneck uh, in uh, getting the jobs over in here in France. And uh, the competition means the kind of skill sets for example, if you are going into IT, what, what skills you need to have to acquire a job in IT? And uh, uh, if you are, if you are going to the uh, in in the in research, uh, what what kind of publications you have, and then what kind of fundings do you have any grant in order to pursue uh, your uh, PhD, uh, your your research in that area? So these are the skill sets and the technical skills and soft skills. For example, if you are going for a programming uh, uh, job, uh, what what programming skills you have in the in the, in terms of technical skills? For example, they may ask for Perl, Python, and uh, R and SQL database languages. So are you really perfect in those skills? And the uh, soft skills, soft skills means interpersonal skills, communicational skills, your team building skills, and uh, are you able to work independently or uh, are you able to take uh, work independently without any seeking any help from others so these are all the soft skills that are required and uh, other option that you can go for is the internships this is a uh, internships can vary from three months to six months this is a good opportunity after masters uh, because you can gain practical work experience you can work on a real-time projects with the companies and also the research projects that are in place and you, you can also expand your professional network 
and sometimes these internships after internships they you can go for full time uh, employment if if the working team is very happy with you they will offer you a cdd and later on they may, they may offer you a cde contract so it will be a good opportunity to go for internships as well and the other uh, options is the entrepreneur like you can start up your own business and you can uh, join as a startup as a co-founder uh, if you have enough uh, money with you so you can uh, go on with your business and the other option is the recent research and development that you can join the companies as a research engineer especially in the in the field of bioinformatics i have seen many of the master students who work as a research engineer in many of the research institutes like in indra cnrs uh, like that and um, universities in, in universities as well like there are many uh, research engineers especially in 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 bioinformatics so this is another opportunity and you can also look for the international opportunities not only in france you can look for uh, postdoc op op options in us uk for the english in the in the english speaking countries you can also apply for the international opportunities then what are the key steps for enrolling in a phd like uh, these are the following steps that uh, one needs to follow in order to go for a PhD uh, position in France, especially. In order to enroll for the PhD, first you need to find a topic. What topic, what you would like to work on. And also you should look for the supervisor. So at the same time, the doctoral school that you are interested in, they also should accept you. So in order to have... Uh, get enrolled in, into a PhD program, you should hold a master's degree. So most of the master's students here in France, they start looking for the, uh, means those who are interested in a doctorate, uh, those who want to go for a doctorate position, they will be checking for the PhD position right in their second year. The positions will be, means uh, they'll be uh, posted in the, in the month of January usually. And uh, they have to apply for the thesis subjects. These thesis subjects I'll be uh, talking about to you in a short period. And they get enrolled in the uh, PhD program. And these are the various doctoral schools that are available in France. And uh, this is the uh, 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 subjects. These are all the subjects. and. Uh, especially in the bio, means uh, in each of the subject you have sub disciplines so you can look for all the disciplines that you are interested in uh, for example biology chemistry informatics maths physics science so these are all the subject that disciplines various disciplines that are available for uh, phd various phd programs when i have talked about the subjects that it uh, it can be in two different uh, types like those uh, fundings that are already funded from the host establishment means the uh, the institute that you are going to apply that will be in the form of a contract and the other thing is the other uh, funding that you are going to choose is from the grant means you should have your own funding in order to go for the phd so these are the two available subjects that are available for the PhD candidates. And if you want to get enrolled, you have to choose the uh, subjects that I have already told you before. And you, you need to prepare a research proposal that will and must correspond to the speciality of the researcher. For example, if you want to do a research in chemistry, there are very various options in chemistry like organic, inorganic, physical. And uh, if you want to go for biology or means out of um, uh, other subjects are also available. As I am from uh, biology background, I am talking about these subjects. So the, the specialization should match with the researcher, with your research topic and also with the supervisor. And if your research proposal, you have to contact the corresponding supervisor and that research proposal, if it, the supervisor is interested, then you can discuss further with him or her and you can proceed for the enrollment of the PhD program. And these are the uh, list of possible funding sources for the doctoral uh, students in France. Means there are of three types. The uh, first one is by host establishment. The second one is with by uh, your country of origin. And the third one is by a company. So when you talk about the uh, host establishment, it is of three types. That is from the doctoral fellowship, 
and they contract with the research institute and uh, the third one is a project financed by the uh, ANR means it is a research agency so each uh, category has its own uh, uh, set of uh, funding resources and a set of uh, years means if, if it is from a doctoral fellowship the fellowship will be for 1400 euros per month for three years and uh, through research it will be from the research budget that will be available from the host institute and uh, the other will be the, with a the contract with the research institute. For example, there are many research institutes in France that CNRS, CEA, CNES. And if it from the institute, it will be for, for 1500 euros per month. And if it is funded by ANR, like uh, another research agency, the, uh, the funding will differ, means 1400 to 1500 euros. And there are other doctoral programs from the country of our origin for example if you take from india there are different fellowship programs that are available that you can uh, pursue from the this from fellowship uh, programs uh, this is a raman Cher uh, cherpax fellowship this is funded by dst the, the department of science and technology from government of india and there is another fellowship as well that is the efil excellence scholarship and this, the stipend is for uh, it, 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 is, it is still 1700 euros and uh, it is from the French Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs. And uh, another fellowship that you can offer is Shikar Thales Fellowship. It is uh, for the Indian students from the low income families. Means each country has its own uh, fellowship programs. For example, Mexico and Algeria, these are all the fellowships available from the uh, other countries as well. Means the, as, as we are from India, so especially for the Indians, these are all the fellowships. And other than this also, you can explore other fellowship options that are available. And uh, the third option is by a company. Here, uh, in partnership with the company, the company will tie up with uh, the research uh, university unit and the researchers, they can work along with the company and also with the uh, un university uh, research team. And th it will be a gr great opportunity because uh, you can work directly with the company and you can earn a PhD uh, at the same time. And after completion of your PhD, you will be placed in a company uh, directly if they have good opportunities. So it, uh, the stipend also is very uh, lucrative if you see for this. Uh, option and uh, these are the list of scholarship uh, available for the doctoral program and you can look for various uh, uh, doctoral pro scholarships uh, from campus france uh, website and uh, the last dates are also available each year uh, they will be aware they will they are means uh, they'll be commencing from uh, uh, January. So the deadlines uh, will be till uh, March and April. So you can look for all the opportunities. Like you, you do have options for masters, doctors, and postdoctors as well. So this is the departmental wise list of doctoral schools in uh, France. Uh, if you look uh, for the all departments in France, we have, uh, for example, uh, in Paris region, Ile de France, we have 99 schools in, uh, um, in, in Paris. So it, these are in different areas. So you can look for the options that are available. You can filter out all, all those options uh, in this uh, section, and you can look for all the available doctoral schools that are available as per your department and the, the area in which you are living in France. So the uh, opportunities that have talked um, for masters have already you have uh, seen and we do have opportunities after PhD also. So means there are more, uh, uh, there will be more opportunities after PhD. Uh, but uh, further, if uh, the if the students, if they want to go for the job or if they want to go for uh, further studies, they can go for the postdoctoral research or research associate positions. And uh, uh, one point I want to step, uh, stress upon over here is to gain a academic research position in France, especially in France, it's, it's a bit difficult because uh, based, on my, based on my personal experience, what I have seen that in order to gain assistant professor, in in uh, res in uh, French universities or the research institutes, uh, they only prefer the French candidates 
later on if they don't get any application from the french candidates which doesn't which which is not the case they will have lot of french candidates so they will choose them uh, despite of our uh, efforts uh, we will not be chosen that is the saddest part and uh, after that they will go for the no, uh, european other european countries like for example spanish uh, german candidates and italian candidates and later on after screening uh, they will again go for the uh, other candidates like other asian candidates like in asian candidates also we do have lot of competition chinese japanese vietnam these all candidates will all be they will be all well versed in french language they'll be very fluent in french and that is the uh, bottleneck where we are lacking so i would like to stress upon even though if it is uh, if we work in a, a english uh, working environment the internal meetings will be in french the internal talks will be in french all other communications will be in french so we have to we have to master french it is very it is very 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 obligatory i would like to stress upon this and if you want to go for the teaching positions they will be in french so we it is very difficult for the academic post to get through in france uh, not only this have tried for the academic positions even in india uh due to very high price and due to some visa constraints we i uh, have done some uh interviews through skype that couldn't fetch much as you know that we need to be in person when when we are uh, uh supposed to be there for the uh, permanent position we had to go in person so i have even tried going in person but couldn't succeed so that is a sad spot so this is my experience and uh Uh, this is process like how to approach for the postdoctoral position so uh, like you can contact the principal investigator and look for funding and you have to prepare the materials like what are the application materials that are required these are all uh, means these are the universities and uh, public research institutes that are available in france and you can submit the application and uh, i would not go further the uh, the last point that would i would like to stress upon is these are the uh, the, the important point is like la- transition from one field to another field means if one wants to change their field for example uh, it may be due to uh, various reasons due to career break maternity in case of women and uh, in in if you are sick something for any personal reasons so you must take proper training in the field, field like new field like which is in demand for example in data science for example then you should get certified means you have to take the training from the institute and especially if it is in france it will be very advantageous in order to get the new job and the disadvantage the part is like all the course will be taught in french so and it will be more expensive so in this case you can take the help from the pole employer and if you have any cpf points that are ever available from the previous employing then you can use those points as well in order to get trained yourself and you can start your new journey in the new field so this is the transition uh, point that by i would like to stress upon over here so i thank you very much uh, for all of you for your kind attention and if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer you thank you very much uh, thank you very much dr hemalata uh, for your valuable insights and uh, for your more concentration on aftermath uh, uh, opportunities after masters i mean uh, many people are doing their masters and looking for the jobs and uh, for the for you to throw light on the uh, very diverse topic of uh, uh, research opportunities or the pg or phd opportunities in france moving forward with our next speaker of the day mr bhuvan chandra naini he holds a french masters degree in food and beverage management with a hands on experience working as an assistant manager at cinepolis recently he started his own restaurant in saint antian near lyon in france here is uh, he is here to enlighten on the topic auto entrepreneurship freelance and business creation in france over to you mr bhuvan
Bhuvan, you are not audible. But he's in the call, right? Uh, should be, should be on the call. Uh, uh, I just had a chat with him. I just had a quick chat with him. Before, I mean, uh, before we go with uh, Bhuvan, uh, maybe we can go with the other speaker. Of, um, uh, sure. Yeah. I would like to introduce um, uh, Mr. Satip Varaprasad Kolipara. So, we have a last speaker of the day. Uh, but definitely not the least. I'm sorry. Uh, he is not the last. I mean, anyways, uh, after that, uh, we'll connect with uh, Bhuvan. Um, so Mr. Satya has uh, more than 18 years of experience uh, working as a chartered accountant and cast accountant. He's an expert to France two years back. And he's here working as a senior manager for at KPMG. Uh, Mr. Satya is here with us to throw more light on being an expert in France and opportunities for an expat in France. Uh, over to you, Mr. Satya. Thanks for uh, giving intro. Um, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Satya. It's OK, great. Yeah, um, so uh, I'm a chartered accountant uh, having 18 plus years of experience. Um, so uh, I have played a different roles in my organization uh, and then mostly I worked in uh, uh, Big Four. Big Four is a, a chartered accountant firms like PwC and uh, KPMG. I came over here uh, as an uh, expat, okay? And uh, uh, I am not sure how many people are know uh, about the expat because um, I just wanted to give an uh, overview what is the difference between expatriate contract and a local contract. So um, most of you know that expat is uh, basically uh, they are having they are coming from India, okay, or any other country to France where they have the uh, company in India and uh, they have the company in France, okay. So that we call it as an expat. Simple example um, uh, as a company, uh, same uh, take my example only. KPMG we have a uh, organization in India and then I came to on secondment with the. Uh, KPMG France, okay. So this is called uh, expat, okay, and uh, which is different from local contract, okay. Where local contract uh, you will have, uh, uh, you might be having a company in uh, uh, India as well as a company in uh, uh, France as well, but still you joined in directly in uh, KPMG France. So then it, we call it as local contract. So what are the um, uh, benefits and then there are a lot of pros and cons when you work as a uh, expat and when you work as a uh, local contract. So a expatriate can shift to a local, okay. So and then similarly, um, uh, yeah, local cannot uh, get into the expat. Uh, so that is a different thing. Um, so uh, the major pros like you have the company will take care of many things okay so you will have uh, um, they would uh, take an instance that uh, you will entitled for housing elements kids school fees uh, one for uh, fly back to your home insurance there are a lot of things the company will take care okay and um, so uh, and also the another uh, biggest thing is that uh, when you are having an expat um, so you um, uh, the social security when they'll continue in india and then you need not pay the same thing in um, um, in france okay so that is the advantages but disadvantage is uh, you will have very um, limited contract in the sense like you will have you would have come on based on some project or some number of years and then you you cannot be there as an expat uh, for a more than five years okay so that that is the major constant okay so you when you wanted to be um, when you decide that uh, the long term perspective you want to continue in france okay so you need to change it to the local contract so that is the major disadvantage 
and uh, yeah i am not sure how it is relevant for this um, uh, people audience but still um, i would like to add few tips okay so for the uh, local contracts as well as uh, for the people who are looking for a job changes okay or looking for an interviews and everyone so first uh, when a expat wanted to uh, change to the local contract if it is is long term perspective he wants to continue in france okay so that is the uh, when he wants to do that don't wait till the last minute okay so you start looking from the day one what are the skill set we are uh, because the culture in india and the culture in france um, it is entirely different okay so we would have worked in different culture and then uh, the you adapt to the french culture okay and uh, as nagesh and dinakar um, so many people uh, they talked about how you present yourself because um it is entirely different uh, when based on my two years experience last two years uh, the way we present in india uh, the way uh, we uh, present it in uh, friends is entirely different so the one of the major tip is that don't give over promises or don't be point to point okay so that is very 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 important uh, because in india generally we will over commit okay we will do it in one week two weeks or yeah something like that okay but in uh, french people it is very specific and then point to point so that is the one of the thing and uh, identify what skill set you are the different skill sets what skill set is the you are lacking in your uh, when while you are presenting in your interviews or Uh, in uh, your um, job profiles and everything focus on that okay so don't um uh, be in comfort zone okay so just come out of your comfort zone and uh, uh, learn continuously continuous learning is the minimum requirement to succeed in the life okay so that is the one of the thing and uh, believe in yourself okay so many people uh, are in the previous speakers they said that the french is the uh, import uh, yeah french is definitely it is very important in cracking the interviews and everything so some people they they feel that okay we will not be able to speak in french and then they will not even try to attend uh, uh, the interviews and uh, the things okay so i strongly uh, say that you believe in yourself take the interview and prepare at least uh, uh, conversation you start the conversation in french first and then you get into the english so nobody will stop uh, or nobody will uh, have anything to say actually so always believe in yourself okay and also there are lot of opportunities uh, where um, english speaking uh, opportunities and then uh, try to um, identify what are the opportunities available um do research uh, and then um, uh, according to your skill set map those opportunities and then prepare your uh, cvs and then prepare your interview accordingly and then uh, apply for it okay so that's the major uh, thing i would like to say so i think uh, that's it from my side um, any any questions happy to take uh, any questions and another uh, important thing is uh, um yeah as i said you just come out of from your uh, comfort zone okay so don't be okay i am comfortable in this and then i wanted to continue in this don't be in that mindset come out of from that okay so all the best for your uh, uh, job search and then uh, for the employment okay thank you thank you very much satya uh, for your uh, for a brief case study on sharing your experience being an expat your insights have a very great re uh, reach uh, for today's session uh, uh, maybe we'll uh, check with bhuvan once again uh, to throw more light on the topic uh, freelance business creation and auto entrepreneurship in france
before bhuvan joins us uh, uh, on throwing on this topic uh, throwing light on this topic uh, i would also like to mention uh, studafix is also sponsoring for today's uh, 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 great event of uh, student career counseling event organized by france telugu community studafix is basically a one step solution for all the uh, students and expats coming to france uh, uh, they have multiple uh, things uh, uh, in their uh, site you can directly reach them on www.studafix.com and uh, you can just access with all the queries you have uh, you can directly address them recently france telugu community collaborates with uh, studafix in uh, showcasing uh, the job opportunities it is in france on their site so you can directly uh, check the site uh, of our studafix uh, to get more updates uh, uh, regarding job opportunities in france yes do we have bhuvan uh, i think uh, bhuvan is there bhuvan can you unmute yourself now there's some problem with uh, joining with bhuvan i mean he's there but uh, uh, there's some technicality issues so uh, we are not going ahead with uh, bhuvan uh, but definitely bhuvan uh, as i told earlier uh, he started his own uh, uh, restaurant recently in saint antion uh, which is in lyon near france and he'll be more than happy to uh, take any queries uh, you can reach, reach him on linkedin i'll be sharing in person with all your mail ids uh, all the linkedins of today's speakers and uh, you can directly reach them for any kind of help you can uh, you cannot directly ask them for an internship opportunity or a job opportunity but definitely you can reach out them for a uh, career enhancement or uh, any queries regarding uh, your uh, uh, career search as we come to the end of the session um as we uh, come to the end of the session uh, you can please raise your hand i will request your name and uh, you can unmute yourself and ask uh, uh, a question to the panel there are, i i see a few uh, questions uh, uh, i see a few questions in the chat at i will uh, try to address those questions uh, to the concerning speaker as well please put forward your question by addressing the speaker first and then your question uh, i'll be uh, just uh, having a uh, few questions uh, which are being asked earlier uh, one question from santosh uh, hello what will be the success condition of uh, searching jobs from india in france and what is the best way to search for it can you give your insights please it uh, please it will be helpful of course i mean uh, uh, any speaker from the uh, from today's panel can address this question and uh, uh, clear this query for santosh Hemant, can I answer this question? Yes, definitely. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Hema Hema Nathi. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Santosh. It it really depends on the way area for which you are looking for. There are uh, different disciplines in France for which you can look for the job. Means if you are looking for the job in IT, you you are looking for the job in data science, or you are looking for the job, uh, like what kind of job do you want really? That you have to think about it. You you need to filter the job that you are looking for and which field you are looking for. And uh, as many speakers have already spoke uh, spoken about it, and I also would stress upon this, like before you apply for the job in France, it is very very important to. to learn at least the basic french that uh, that will be very very helpful because you will face lot of difficulties after moving to france 
even though you have good uh, expertise uh, and uh, good uh, skills like uh, in the in the form of technical skills i'm speaking about you need to have a basic french and if you want to uh, move to france means you you can learn from, start learning french and also start uh, learning french from basic to intermediate level at least and then you can look for the opportunities there are many job sites that are available you can go for indeed and you can for, go for uh, apec.fr and uh, glassdoor.fr there are many jobs that are available that the job sites that are available hope that i have answered this your question and if you have more questions please let me know yes definitely thank you dr hemalata nathi so uh, going to the next question should the cv be in french or english it's completely a diplomatic question but uh, 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 thank you dinakar uh, uh, for answering this question yeah definitely you can go ahead all right so um really it depends um if the job description is in english try to send it in english if it's in french in french but make sure you speak french uh there are some candidates who keep you know sharing their cvs in french despite like they don't know french and at last they are, end up in a situation where uh we call them and just start speaking french and they can't so it's not a good impact um so make sure uh, you know the language if you're sending your cv in french um i think in the beginning hemant has shared a fun bit about me so i have always used my english cv um, though i speak french but um if in the job description i see it's written that the english is required i use that um while applying for a job and make sure your english uh if you're targeting a french company or you know uh very typical uh, you know french culture is there make sure you're using a simple english language not like difficult words so it is easy for other person like who is not like maybe fluent in english you know can at least understand everything so don't use very high end words but try to be kind of like basic and um only french cv when it is uh, when you speak the language otherwise just send it in english that definitely oh, answers this question, question radhika yes thank you so much for your answer also there is dinakar who already answered this question it is not always mandatory i would suggest it uh, is simple to keep in english unless you are highly confident of the french language proficiency and you would put your cv in the uh, in the french format then you are creating a similar expectation for the interview for you also to speak in french mm. so i hope this answers uh, all the questions and going to the next question we have one more question by uh, ms jyoti barakhir uh, i have completed be bachelor's degree uh, in india in electrical engineering and have 3 years of experience as a java backend developer beginning in learning uh, beginner in learning french is master degree mandatory to get a job in france or only bachelor's uh, degree with french language proficiency would be sufficient i think uh, nagesh garu can answer this question i mean if you are comfortable to um yeah i think uh, i don't think you need a masters but the masters is uh, good uh, for you to get socialized into the uh, into the french ecosystem you know that will give you a space uh because uh, when you come here you don't know which way to look uh, so masters is giving you the breathing period so that you understand also you probably uh, improve finesse uh, your language skills um so i would uh, even though it's not mandatory but my gut says it's better that you do master route uh, to get into employment market here in france and also people are going to relate you know the other one is if you're getting masters from a very good reputed institute so there are a lot of alumni and who are in senior position that really helps you improve chance of getting into the job so i would uh, suggest masters is a good route thank you so much uh, nagesh uh going forward with uh, the next question is miss by mr hung anonymous can i do different uh, field of internships in after completion of masters is it helpful full or not if i understand the question uh, he is asking whether he can do multiple uh, master uh, internships after completing his masters in france so maybe uh, 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 who can answer this question i, uh, I can answer aimant yeah thank you please go ahead yeah so actually as per the law 
we are required to do only one internship that is which is mandatory in the course for six months okay. after that in france the law doesn't permit us to to do an another internship within the same course but if your company that you are already doing an internship or if you find any other company that is willing to give you an internship contract for six months you can enroll in an online uh, course in france and then from that school you will get a certificate that will give you the right to do an internship so this is how normally it works in france perfect yes thank you aditya for answering this question so yes just one point him and very correctly that, that once you receive your degree you cannot do an internship again so the alternative would be to uh, as was suggested you take an alter, uh, online course but uh, or you can try to delay the degree of your ongoing course so that if you have an opportunity you can pick up another internship thank you thank you dinakar and uh, uh, aditya for answering these questions uh next question is from pranay pawan munagala uh, hi my question is to radhika ma'am i have two years of working experience in amazon india do you think it can make an impact when i apply for amazon in france because i can only see uh, student intern positions in france asking for french proficiency can you give me a suggestion radhika it's uh, it's for you yes you no problem So um well I think if you have worked in Amazon of course um you be considered as a boomerang candidate and you can still apply um uh, regarding what was it um can you just repeat the question Hemant I think I can't He has a uh, two years of uh, working experience in Amazon India he is asking whether it can create an impact okay. uh, for application in job, uh, uh, Amazon France all right so in terms uh, i think you also mentioned about the french language so exactly. um i think if it is you know in the job description it if it says um in the basic qualification you need french i think in that terms that is not negotiable if it is a preferred qualification skill set of course this is a negotiable and it is something not required so i suggest when you are applying for a job make sure uh, you are meeting uh, Uh, the meeting the requirements of the basic qualification and preferred are like still something which is not like always required so i hope this helps your answer but happy to connect with you um maybe on linkedin to help you with that definitely it would be a plus for him uh, to integrate the culture of amazon uh, back in india as well as in france it would be a very good push up for him uh, pushing back uh, uh, the other applications who has prior who has no prior experience in amazon uh, 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 in their past experience thank you radhika for answering this question uh, oh, go ahead uh, him on just one point i wanted to add on that amazon thing right Okay. they are usually very independent entities i've seen that uh, you know they don't necessarily care about whether you have experience in other part of the world mm. okay so as long as the skill set matches uh, they will consider but otherwise uh, amazon amazon uh, doesn't work that way that's my experience uh, from one of my close uh, relatives thank you very much uh, nagesh uh, for uh, having this i mean unleash topic <laughs> yeah thank you very much uh, so concerning the next question uh, how is job opportunity how are job opportunities in for freshers after ms in data science and cyber security already mr nagesh uh, answered this uh, question uh, saying there are a lot of good opportunities please get yourself well versed with uh, gen ai tools it will improve yeah. your chances yeah i yeah. just want to elaborate a little uh, just in 10 seconds uh, one mm -hmm. thing is uh, you know gen ai is disrupting the whole job market uh, as mm -hmm. you can see it's because of uh, either it is enhancing your productivity of the existing people so no new jobs are needed whatever right and data is another area where it is heavily disrupting because you know the gen ai can generate uh, synthetic data uh, which mm -hmm. was taking a lot of uh, people's time and energy so uh if you want to be in that space uh if you have already have an experience best thing is to put you at an advantage is to run uh, 
learn how Genai can be is being used in various use, business use cases uh, in the data space. You know, that's the one that I wanted to say. Um, so use Genai techniques in data area before you even go to in, any interview or anything, do some projects, something, then it's going to hugely improve your chance of uh, getting a job. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Nagesh. Uh, next question is by Sharaz Khan. Hi, good morning. I am doing master's in digital marketing. Basically, I am pharmacist in India. Can I do part-time job in pharmacy in France? Maybe uh, someone who can answer this question. Uh, can I answer this question, Hemant? Yes, definitely. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Hemala Tanati. Yeah, uh, as I'm currently in the clinical research area, uh, if, if, if she can do, means uh, she has, she need to have, um, first of all, the basic French and also um, she, she should be fluent in French because in pharmacy, uh, means uh, if she want to do any part-time job, she has to take some formation, like uh, it depends on uh, the, uh, really depends upon what exactly she wants. Means only in the pharmacy. Means in the in the pharmacy, medical shops or something like that. If she want to work on means in in pharmacy, we have different options as well. Uh, she, she can go for those specializations if she want to look for the job opportunities. And she has to take some initial uh, training. Uh, means in France that have stress upon means when you come to France the uh, experience that you have gained in India means uh, if it is in the same field it can be fetching but at the same time they really look for the experience that you have gained in uh, in France so uh, it will be better for her uh, to take the uh, uh, formation in France that will be a better opportunity to, to start for uh, other jobs like means after she take the formation then she can go for uh, jobs that is my kind suggestion thank you so much thank you so much for answering this question dr hemalata so before we take up the next question uh, we have one more sponsor of the day that is uh, taj mahal restaurant uh, they also have their open positions for a uh, full time uh, uh, chef uh, in their restaurant uh, and the sponsorship uh, for the french work permit will also be given uh, uh, after one year of uh, gaining experience uh, working with them so you can directly dm uh, them and you can crack your opportunity uh, moving forward, uh, the next question. Uh, hello, all. Thank you for this session. Thank you, Jyotir, uh, Jyotirmai. Uh, so for ATS, the keywords to filter the resume will be in English as well as even if the job description is given in French. So, I mean, the, I'm just uh, formulating the question again. So for the uh, ATS, uh, which will be used by the French recruiters, will it be in the French language or the English language is what Jitirmai is asking uh, to the panel. So maybe Radhika or Aditya, who have well hands-on experience working in AI, you can answer this question. Yes, I want to take this question. Uh, first, I want to just tell a definition of ATS. So ATS is uh, not any AI, but it's more like an applicant tracking system. So I think every company has that. And it is more about like keeping a track of your applications, uh, candidates applying for a particular job. Um, majorly, CVs are reviewed by the recruiters. And that's being said, uh, they use a String. So, bullying string is something um, as a keyword that we use while, while searching for a candidate on LinkedIn. But for resumes, normally it is um, like by recruiters, uh, not by AI as of now. Um, still, like, you know, things are changing in today's world and some companies started maybe adapting that. But uh, don't confuse yourself with ATS. I know many ATS is there and, you know, your CVs are being reviewed by robots or different things. It is just more about the applicant tracking system where uh, the companies keep your data when you apply for a job. But um, I don't know, Aditya, if you have like maybe any other points here. Okay. Thank you.
uh, uh, thank you radhika for answering this question uh, uh, moving forward with another question uh, by swaraj what is the minimum level of french expectation uh, when applying for an it job in france so yeah just one i wanted to make one point after that somebody can elaborate is see yeah, it job and what company and what is your skill you know that is a uh, important thing if you have some skill uh, suppose uh, you are a damn good expert in prompt engineering and llms and new llms you know you don't have anybody here so language doesn't matter and they will take you the point i'm trying to make is uh, language becomes uh, and if they don't find anybody they are ready to compromise the language especially in it when you said it it's very broad so if your skill is very niche they don't care about your language they take you but if your skill is something uh, which they can find easily with other french speaker then uh, language becomes uh, important thank you mr nay thank you for answering this question also thank you sarita for uh, uh, sharing uh, multiple uh, job portal sites uh, on the chat uh, i hope uh, this insight will be uh, very useful for all the people who are looking for uh, different opportunities in france uh, going ahead uh, from one more question from mr hunk could you please let me know the way to crack uh, interviews without having a prior internship experience or any experience in france or india Uh, previously when i had chat with uh, uh, aditya i mean uh, he was very eager uh, to share uh, how to crack an opportunity uh, without prior internship experience or without any prior, uh, prior uh, professional experience maybe aditya if you are uh, still available can you please take this question yeah roman can you hear me yes yes yeah sorry there was some problem with him uh, perfect yeah so uh, i think earlier i showed it in my presentation that if you don't have any experience even in france or in your home country like india you can start building your portfolios and you can add your projects in the portfolio and also you can do volunteer experience so that when you have an interview you can show your projects and then your experience it's not very difficult when you can convince the recruiter that you have the skills to do that particular job so this is my own personal experience maybe the other presenter presenters have any other ideas thank you aditya for answering i think question. i wanted to start one point here um also with that i think be a subject matter expert on linkedin um so if you don't have maybe relevant experience um not worked in indian france just uh try to like optimize linkedin and you know be active member and use your skill set that you have gained uh, maybe from your studies or you know if you have like just knowledge about the topic and be um open to join some like linkedin groups and act as a subject matter expert so it will help you give visibility to other people on linkedin and helps you networking and get um that right job that you're looking for thank you for your input radhika uh that definitely i mean uh, gives a uh, boost for the uh, starters or the freshers who are looking for their opportunities in france and going forward with the next question uh, from amla sapru hi uh, i have almost 10 years of uh, retail banking experience in india and have moved here two years back i am doing a certification in business analysis right now and have a to level french proficiency i have observed the retail banking i need very good level of french what are the opportunities in france shifting from banking to it the multiple See, things yeah. that are involved in this question yeah <laughs> i i can go for it see Thank retail you. banking as i was mentioning also right uh, retail banking is extremely franco french um like copper investment banking where you had to deal with external entities they speak english but retail banking is very french um so even and also you're saying business analysis business analysis means you have to deal with the business people and they are going to be usually french whichever way you look at it either business analysis perspective or retail banking perspective french becomes in the, you know important part of the equation 
Um, so shifting to IT uh, means even if you shift to IT, because I don't know your skill set, but uh, still it will be a uh, business analysis, right? That is your core skill because you're coming from a hardcore industry experience. So even if you come to IT, you're going to do the same job of having to speak to your business users for getting IT requirements. So still French becomes uh, un uh, unfortunately an important uh, element. I don't know how to get around this if you move out of uh, maybe retail banking into some other space in business analysis, it might work in IT also. But uh, within retail banking, it, it won't work. That's for sure, because at least now, maybe in a few, four or five years, it may change, but for now, no. That's my question. That's my answer, Rahman. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nagesh Garu, for answering this question. And moving forward with next question uh, from Pranay Pawan Munagala. Is it preferable to take a gap year and do internships or to complete the study and seek for permanent jobs? Wow. A different question. Okay, maybe I can I can jump in here. Yes, please uh, go ahead, Aditya. I think the best option, if you have an opportunity, if you are pursuing a grand account course that allows you to take a gap year, please go for it. It's a very, very unique opportunity. You will have uh, an optimum time to understand if the field, if the career, what you want to pursue is ideal for you or not. After working for one year, I think most of the universities, they offer uh, different courses for your majors. You can pursue that course. By this time, you're already experienced with the job market and then also you have a uh, certification from the school, you will have more opportunities in the market. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question is again by uh, Ms. Jyoti Barakir. Uh, I am here as a dependent and have three years of uh, experience in Java backend. And for me, uh, it would take six plus months to learn French. Is it illegal to work for Indian company remotely from France? If a company allows, you can work. Um, see, only the issue of working in different country while employment is in another country is a taxation. Um, but if uh, your company allows, Indian company allows you to work while you are in France, whether uh, officially or in unofficially, it's okay. Um, so it's morely, it's a very company related policy and immigrate, not immigration, but uh, taxation related policy. Because you have to pay taxes there, but uh, you are you a resident of other country, which is a conflict. <clears throat> but if you have a three years of Java experience back end, that too, you're a full stack developer and you can directly apply for France itself. Um, you have opportunities for full stack developers and you can especially directly get even without French. France, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, what's the month? Uh, especially in TCS France, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> yes, in <laughs> TCS France. Yeah, full stack developer. And your hardcore developer would love to take you. Yeah. Thank you for answering this question, Nagesh. Yeah. Uh, I want hello, to add everyone. one more point here. Uh, sorry. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. So when you have an experience, let's say you have an experience of three, four years as a full stack developer in India, you came to France and then you are searching for an you know, opportunity here or you are trying to pursue a master. So the best thing what a candidate can do is also have a portfolio on the uh, freelancing websites. There are many freelancing websites. And once you have your portfolio over there, you have clients who are going to pay you for the work, what you are doing. So parallelly, while you are pursuing your masters, you also have an opportunity to gain some money and also experience, which could be very, very valuable when you are uh, hunting for a full-time job. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya, for answering this question. Uh, we'll have the last question of the session. Hi, all. Thank you for the session. I am a physiotherapist and a pharmacist in 2013 to 2016 in India. I don't have any work experience. I have my Indian certificates. Any suggestions for job opportunities or any master's courses uh, of physiotherapy? I completed six months of French course in India. I have certificates from Ramakrishna Math Hyderabad, is it useful? 
uh thank you for your question uma devi maybe uh, dr hemalata nathi will be uh, the right person to answer this question uh yes hemant uh, for uma devi it will i would suggest if she could go for the masters that will be useful especially in france if she want to move to france if she can go for the masters okay and if if that is not the case if he she can go for any work means she can join uh, and have some work experience even that will work if she want to move to france okay yeah thank you for the answer uh, uh, dr hemalata so we'll have the uh, one last question uh, from deepa narayan hi thanks for the wonderful session i have 13 years of php experience in india and i am on career break for past 5 years with french a2 level and can you uh, uh, can any one of you speakers can review my resume and let know your feedback please definitely deepa narayan you can directly uh, dm um, uh, any of our speakers uh, the uh, their linkedin uh, uh, handles will be uh, shared with you later today uh from the official mail id uh, of france telugu community that can be yeah, done i think uh, yeah, yeah one thing i wanted to say on this uh, yeah reviewing cv is one part of it but php uh, is a tech stack uh, is aging and uh, means it's almost sunset uh, kind of tech stack so that to with the career break and php being the core thing um the jna is able to develop screens in 10 5, 10 15 minutes so i would say you need to really invest in up, um, you know upskilling yourself before hello hemant can are you hearing or no you are on mute hemant Hal, uh, this Nagesh, uh, I was talking. Did I? Yeah, Nagesh, I we was can hear you. Yes, Nagesh. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, yes. I yeah, I was just uh, reacting to Deepa Narayan, who is yes. a PHP thing, right? Yes. Thank you, thank you, Nagesh. Sir, thank you very much for your uh, inputs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Bye. Problem with the Hemant. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I was being muted. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, before we close this session, uh, there is one extension uh, to uh, for today's session. There is one interesting artificial intelligence tool uh, developed by one of our speaker today, uh, Mrs. Radhika Bhatia. Uh, Radhika Bhatia, you can directly, I mean, uh, share your screen or share your insights on your recently developed uh, artificial intelligence tool. Uh, uh, yeah, you can share it. well um at present i will just drop uh, the link in the chat um so i'm working on creating a ai tool um to help the job seekers um and i would love to have your uh, feedback uh, advice so the idea basically is to get everything ready when a person think about like start searching for a job maybe how to write a cover letter um it will give you score about your cv and job description so all you have to do is add your job description and add your resume inputs and it will give you customized suggestion weakness strengths about the cv the percentage um your resume is matching with the job description um these are if you want to generate um a bullet point maybe you're not able to you know make it better you want to add some data metrics point or uh, any achievements so just give um, your suggestion and i'm happy to you know take it further it's just still at the first phase but i st i'm still working on it so i will be adding like more options time to time so it's a free tool um you can use it for your job search or maybe writing a message on a linkedin to approach or uh, reach out to the hiring manager or the recruit um so it's one stop for i think everything um in your job search thank you very much radhika for your artificial intelligence tool uh, concerning reaching multiple people on linkedin definitely it would be really helpful for everyone since it's on the developing stage uh, we as attendees uh, can give our valuable feedback uh, to her in developing her uh, entire uh, uh, module uh, so we have a siddharth raised hand uh, ah okay i didn't see that sorry 
uh yes uh brahmampalli siddhartha uh, you can uh you can talk now i mean yeah uh, hello everyone uh good afternoon so like uh my query is like i finished my masters like in international business so like uh, in 2024 in february so like presently i'm searching for an internship uh so like i have the three months of internship experience in the finance department like while i was in india so i need some valuable tips on this like to like to get my internship like and to make my cv good and uh said that uh, when you say finance uh, uh, is there any specific uh, sector we are targeting on or a uh, profession yeah i'm yeah i'm targeting on sap fico uh, okay yeah and sap fico uh, so i'm searching on on that uh, profile okay uh, you can send me your cv i work in finance so i can let you know if there are any suitable opportunities for this too okay yeah sure sure thank yeah. you yeah thank you so much thank you very much aditya for being so quick in answering his uh, query and uh, as well as uh, looking for his opportunities uh, as we come to the end of the session uh, if there are no questions further we will be moving on to the next part of the session is there anyone who can unmute themselves and uh, give a quick feedback on wow, wow, about today's session because the uh, france telugu community for the first time uh, is uh, uh, has created this beautiful platform where we have the speakers from different domains talking on different topics uh, to answer all the queries if you have any feedbacks or if you have any to think talk about uh, to talk about this session you can just uh, raise your hand or you can write it on the chat thank you so much bro for your uh, this section and uh, many of the uh, fans students uh, i mean telugu students also saying that uh, france is uh, not a good country to studying ms and uh, there is no job opportunities and they are easily uh, translate their uh, mind but uh, this uh, program will help to uh, help to find the, uh, find how is uh, ms masters and the, and the job opportunities in france it is very helpful for the freshers and the students uh upcoming uh, uh, coming students so uh, why i don't know telling that uh, lies in uh, uh, that students uh, i don't know but uh, this this is very helpful for the students and uh, i will i highly recommend it to uh, continually means uh, it uh, continues to do this uh, pro, uh, this program like uh, after two months three months like that this is very helpful for the students bro thank you so much for your uh, co-host and all the hosts thank you hamant bro thank you thank you uh, paman kalyan so we have one direct question to me from arvin hi one question uh, opportunities for project management roles with five, 15 plus years of experience he, he i mean i'm just reframing this question uh, he's uh, asking how are the opportunities for project management roles uh, with 15 plus years of experience in france i think for project management roles especially in france uh, they require advanced level of french uh, minimum b2 if i'm not wrong okay or at least bilingual thank you aditya for answering this question uh, um, miss jyoti you can unmute yourself and you can uh, directly talk yeah uh, thank you for this wonderful session Uh, the session was helpful and uh, i have noted the points which are been said in today's session and uh, that helps me to get an opportunities in france france so uh, telugu community i i was full to attend the session i would thank uh, france telugu community thank you very much jyoti for your valuable feedback uh, uh, and um, uh, of course i mean uh, i have few dms uh, uh, concerning whether this uh, session is recorded or this presentation will be share, shared later this evening yes of course uh, this uh, uh, session is recorded and uh, all the deliverables that are given by all the speakers for the day will be shared with you in person as a mail from the official mail id france telugu community at the gmail.com and uh, we have other feed, uh, other people who raised their hand uh, from uma devi can you please unmute yourself 
Hi, hi everybody. Thank you for the session. Uh, it's really useful. And um, as uh, Madam told that Hamlita, ma'am, I was I am in France as of now and from twenty twenty three August. So, uh, is it uh, possible to go to uh, to approach a hospital directly for the work experience? Uh, uh... Hello. Uh, so, I have a very close friend who did a uh, master's in the clinical uh, research in India, of course, and uh, he's here since seven years. The problem, especially in the pharmaceutical medical field in France, is most of the work culture is in French. So there are very, very, very limited opportunities. Even if there are opportunities, they ask for a French uh, equivalent certification. Of course, the exam is uh, in French and also the, the preparation, the exam are, are a bit different. And also I, I hear that it's difficult also to pass the exam successfully. Uh, but nevertheless, there are some French public universities who, uh, who offer a master's in this kind of um, field in English, but they also have their research labs. So the idea of this course is when you are pursuing this uh, master's, you can also work in their uh, laboratory and you gain some valuable experience and also you can improve your French. So uh, I, I don't know who asked this question, but if you can connect with me, I can share those uh, uh, website links with you and then you can... Uh, start looking for them definitely all the speakers for today are uh, really wonderful and um, and uh, uh, you can directly connect uh, them with their linkedin handles uh, and uh, definitely they'll be there to help you out or uh, support you in your entire career search thank you so much aditya for answering this uh, we will go ahead with uh, the last two questions for the day from karan and pranay uh, karan uh, you can please unmute yourself and you can talk hello yes yeah hi uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for the insight, and it was really uh, helpful. Uh, my just one kind of feedback is uh, uh, to for the you know organizer that if you know besides this, um, uh, if you can you know have some kind of a uh, maybe a small WhatsApp group where you know at least we can share the relevant job opportunities, uh, and maybe you know if someone you know have a suitable uh, kind of a candidate and they can apply. Um, and you know that kind that will be kind of helpful uh, you know for for the for for the people who are seeking the new job opportunities and as as we understood that you know french would be an uh, kind of a, you know a very much uh, really important for seeking a new job um, so yeah you know we need to focus on that but yeah besides that if, you, if something you know there are some jobs which i you know keep on you know checking on linkedin you know it comes and it goes like like uh, you know in one day if there's an english speaking job so you know if you know if there are you know many uh, you know people who have some kind of relevant topics they can share so that will be kind of helpful thank you karan uh, i mean uh, your feedback is uh, completely validated and uh, the student youth council of uh, france telugu community will be checking with the entire team of france telugu community on working on this uh, whatsapp group and concerning the job postings of uh, availabilities in france recently france telugu community has been collaborating uh, with uh, studafix uh, to use their uh, web portal or the platform uh, to get the notifications of uh, if there is any availability or a serious position which one of the professional is in the community is looking for will be posted onto the site of uh, Sudafix and you can directly uh, check uh, with them and you can directly apply for the job roles and they will be uh, uh, validating your uh, CV depending on the uh, required skill set and the uh, uh, description, job description and they, definitely they will refer you internally. I hope answer, I answered your question. And yeah. uh, forward, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, moving forward with the last question for the day, uh, uh, if you, I mean, uh, definitely it will not be the last question. You can directly write us on to the France Telu community at the red gmail.com and uh, we will be available to you to answer uh, the question or the query in the best way possible. Prane, you can unmute yourself and you can talk. Prane, you are not audible.
uh, I'm not sure uh, uh, there's some technical issue. Uh, since we are moving at the end of the session, you can either write on the chat your query or you can directly DM us or, uh, at the red France Telugu community at the red gmail.com. We'll be there to answer your query. Before we end this session, uh, uh, I would like to request uh, Ms. Uh, Sudha if uh, you have anything to talk on about this session and uh, then we can wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Heyman. Thank you for having me as your co-host for today's session. And also for the for this great initiative of for creating a platform like these uh, to bringing up all the experienced people in different fields to connect with the job seekers in France. Uh, it really gives a valuable insights to all our audience today to take away with them. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, to all speakers for giving your valuable uh, insights today. Uh, it's really uh, a good uh, um, session to all the audience. I feel they have uh, something to learn from here. Um, yeah, thank you, Hemant. Thank you are the two words uh, through which uh, we can show our attitude. Firstly, on behalf of studio, uh, Student Youth Council, France Telugu community, I take this opportunity to thank France Telugu community and its executive committee for creating such a beautiful platform to showcase uh, this need. I thank all the speakers who are a part of today's session, who are being patient and uh, very, uh, um, very uh, responsive and very uh, quick in answering all the queries uh, raised by the uh, uh, attendees. I thank, uh, I thank you all. And uh, I thank all the at attendees uh, for being such a wonderful audience. Last but not the least, I thank my co-host, uh, Mrs. Sudha, uh, for handling this event effortlessly. Thank you, one and all. Hemant, I think hey, you, just star, to you did really point. well, Sudha and uh, Hemant. I think thanks to you guys, because it's not easy to get everyone together and, uh, you know, patronize the whole thing. And I think big thumbs up to you both. Thank you, Nagesh. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Hemant, uh, just one point. I Firstly, I want to thank you, France Telugu community, for this uh, such a wonderful initiative, especially all the organizers, speakers, and also students for spending their valuable Sunday time today with us. And also, as you all know, uh, recently, France Telugu community also organized uh, Power BI sessions, which will help students, job seekers to uh, 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 improve their skills. So at France Telugu community, we are always trying to help students and job seekers. So students, if you have any questions, if you have any problems, don't worry, we are all are here. You can send a message in the group and we can help you. So just relax, you will find amazing opportunities. Just upskill yourself. Thank you very much, Aditya. I mean, uh, as we uh, mentioned earlier, the Power BI session was uh, uh, organized by Aditya. Uh, on behalf of France Telugu community. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, organizing uh, such workshops uh, for the needy. Thank you, Hemant and uh, Sudha for uh, organizing this event. And uh, I also would like to thank the F FTC for creating this platform. It is a great uh, opportunity for all the students who are looking for the job opportunities. and. Uh, it will i'll be looking forward for more of these sessions especially for in order to help the students and student communities who are really in need of job and uh, who are looking for the job opportunities and don't hesitate to contact me uh, who who would like to seek the job opportunities especially in in research areas or phds or postdocs or in the pharma so you can reach out to me and uh, if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me thank you thank you all Thank you, Hema. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you very much for giving your valuable uh, weekend time for us. Yes. So also, uh, before we yes, end this yes. session, a happy holy to you all. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holy. Happy holy. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Happy holy. I think you can stop the record, uh, Hemant. Yes, I think, uh, yeah.